what do adults have to do to maintain activity? We have to do with our kids as well. So what is that? You got to structure it, unfortunately. And I know it sounds crazy, but I think the only way for most parents who have busy lifestyles to do this for the kids is you sign them up for sports yep. and you schedule stuff. And maybe what you do is you say today, no electronics and you turn off the Wi-Fi and you take everything. And then you hear a lot of complaining. There's a lot of pissing and moaning. And you say, I, look, this is just, we're just, it's an electronic day and you got to figure it out. And then you'll see that they'll start to do stuff. But I think you have to schedule it the same way adults now have to schedule activity. Kids now don't spontaneously go and play outside because no one's outside. Imagine if you were a kid right now. I want to go outside and play. You go outside, you're by yourself. There's no other kids out there, no neighborhood kids playing. Yeah, yeah. So I think you have to literally schedule yeah, sports changed. and activities. Parents, calm down. Everything's going to be okay. Climate change is not making your kids fat. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that is going- What's happening? That's going viral on the news right I now. I can't believe that actually they would ask, somebody would actually write an article saying that climate change is contributing to childhood obesity in any significant we've way. Hit, uh, we've hit peak ridiculousness. It's, it's peak insanity. And it's no wonder people are so confused about health and fitness. It's no wonder. Because I, mean, I know there's people out at home who are all scared about climate change anyway, right? Because it's this big issue. And now they're like, oh. So is it, okay, That's why Timmy I stopped. saw this on the news. I didn't even see the written article. So this is, it's making its rounds. A new study showing how climate change, specifically higher temperatures, is making our children uh, more inactive and more obese. So it's not like the argument one is, person said this. This is parody or something. The argument is it's too hot for kids to go outside. Yeah, yeah, I, I read it. And that's, first of all, it. kids weren't going outside anyway. Number two, I grew up in the Bay Area, okay? When it was- Dude, we've had heat waves since forever. We always went outside. You know what we did? We just sweat and we'd spray water on each other, have water fights and stuff like that. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's the dumbest thing ever. It, kids are fat because of the same reasons why their parents are fat. It's because they eat a lot Modeled of- Modeled behavior. A lot of uh, heavily processed food, so they overeat. Kids do not play outside like they used to. Any parent will tell you. First of all, you don't need a parent. Drive through neighborhoods. When I was a kid, if it was after school and you were driving through neighborhoods, you would have to be. You'd have to sl stop and slow your car down four or five times because there was a game happening in the street. Mm -hmm. Wait for the kids to make move way. Kids on their bikes. They're doing this thing over here. Now you drive through. Nobody's outside. It's quiet. And even now. When my kids hang out with other kids, you know what they do? They hang out to play video games together yeah. mm -hmm. or to, to be inside together. They don't go outside. So it's just, that's the problem. It's not climate change. Everybody now, what do you, okay, so uh, what do you guys do to combat that? Like, what do you got, knowing that, because you also don't want to like, I mean, the kids, uh, video games are pretty rad and awesome today. Yeah. So you, I Plus don't. Plus that's how they socialize. Right. That's how they, so you, there's got to be this balance of, okay, I recognize that these kids are just not going to move as much as my generation did, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm not going to be the old man who's constantly reminding them, like, oh, when I was a kid, oh. So yeah, it's yeah. just like, so what do you do as strategies as parents to negate the amount of potential weight gain that they'll have because they're sitting and they're eating while they're sitting? Like, do you guys have rules around how or what they eat? Yeah, I got rules. One thing that I did over this weekend, I was going to bring it up anyway, <laughs> but was just to kind of create more opportunities for them to want to go outside and to want to do things and be active and play. So we have a trampoline. We have like, you know, an outdoor kind of um, course with like rings and pull up bars and whatnot. But I just set up a, uh, a target range outside uh, so that they can shoot their BB guns and bone arrows and whatnot. And so it's just like, if there's no incentive for them, it, unfortunately now, like we have to create those things for them to get excited about they don't just like know to go outside and like dig and find bugs and well whatever. see katrina, katrina and i were actually talking about you and courtney and your family with this in regards to this actually and i'm actually really curious about what you have to say more because i think i'm more like you uh as far as being a little bit more of a homebody i enjoy watching the movie yeah. like Justin, you and Courtney, something I recognize from being traveling with you and being with you guys so much, you as adults don't even like to sit in yeah. the house and sit uh, still. It drives me crazy. Yeah, you guys both have, you guys get cabin fever. Like, we'll go to the trucky place, all of us together, 
And I'm completely content with, I might not leave this house yeah. for the next five days <laughs> yeah. and just relax and yeah. veg. Like it's, I am like the, I'm like where you, you guys will not spend more than 24 hours. It's once, if you've spent a whole day sitting in that house, the next day you guys are for sure out yeah. and gone. So you've, 100%. you've done a really good job of modeling that for your kids. And so I'm sure it's a little bit easier for you. So. Well, it, you know what it is, is I, I do, I think a lot about this because it's very different. When, when we were kids, we went outside because there was nothing else to do otherwise. And so yeah. there didn't need to be stuff outside to do. It was, if you didn't go outside, you didn't see anybody. <laughs> right. You didn't play. Or, and, t and cartoons were not on 24 hours a day. <laughs> right. So when we were kids, cartoons were on Saturday morning. So there was nothing on TV. There was nothing else to do. You could read, which I would do sometimes, but kids are only going to do that so much. Right. So you had to go outside and you had to figure out things to do. So what it reminds me of is how adults used to be active uh, by default. Adults used to be active by default because work was physical. All work. In the house, work was physical. Mm -hmm. Outside the house, work was physical. So we were just active by default. So as kids, we were active by default. So what do, what do adults have to do to maintain activity? We have to do with our kids as well. So what is that? You got to structure it, unfortunately. And I know it sounds crazy, but I think the only way for most parents who have busy lifestyles to do this for the kids is you sign them up for sports yep. and you schedule stuff. And maybe what you do is you say today, no electronics and you turn off the Wi-Fi and you take everything. And then you hear a lot of complaining. There's a lot of pissing and moaning. And you say, I, look, this is just, we're just, it's an electronic day and you got to figure it out. And then you'll see that they'll start to do stuff. But I think you have to schedule it the same way adults now have to schedule activity. So is know? that yeah. what you do now? Is that's that, that's what I have to do. Because I think you you have a better representation for me. Not to, I mean, I think it's a positive thing, Justin. By the way, too, this is not yeah, a slide at you. I think no, it's, it's I think it's amazing that you do that, and I think you've fostered that, and I think your kids are going to be have those good habits because you've done such a good job. I, I worry about myself because I'm less like you in that area, yeah. and, and I know I have to model that behavior for my son. And I, I I do like to relax and sit in the house, and I'll watch a movie or do something like that. I'm less likely to be more physical and go out. It so. doesn't happen. On, uh, like, um, think about all the things in your life that used to happen on their own. Like before you had kids, you know, when you're married, like, oh yeah, we just have spontaneous sex and we just go out to dinner. And when you have kids, yeah. all of a sudden, none of that happens because your schedule is busy. So you have to literally, I mean, people will tell you, schedule dinners and date nights. Yeah. And you think, oh, that's ridiculous. We used to never have to do that. Well, yeah, you're busy. Your schedule, your schedule is different now. Kids now don't spontaneously go and play outside because no one's outside. Imagine if you were a kid right now. I want to go outside and play. You go outside, you're by yourself. There's no other kids out there, no neighborhood kids playing. Yeah, yeah. So I think you have to literally schedule yeah, everything's sports changed. and activities. Yeah, everything's That's changed. That's just that, it. To your point of that, I mean, like the hard labor that we used to have to do for jobs, it's like we had to recreate that in the gym setting uh, in order to be able to kind of keep your body, uh, keep it upkeep. And, uh, I think that you, we don't consider kids as much because they seem to have all this like boundless energy. Uh, but now, uh, they're drawn to these electronics. They're drawn to just kind of hanging out. And like you said, they communicate all day with their friends on there. And so it's like, where's the incentive for them to, to run out and do physical activity? That's where yeah. you see and hang out with your friend. My grandfather to this day makes fun of me for working out in a gym. He thinks it's the funniest thing. He goes, you go, he goes, you go somewhere to lift heavy things. Yeah. He goes, I, used to, I used to lift rocks like yeah. for work, you know? Yeah. So it's weird because Chop down trees. I have to schedule workout. Think about our lives. How much activity do you guys do outside of your scheduled yeah, yeah. exercise? Right. Yeah. So I think you just have to do the same thing with the kids. And we're just in that generation now that has to figure that out. Well, I'm, I guess yeah. I, I guess I'm personally or selfishly curious about you guys. Cause you guys are so much further ahead than I yeah. am. I know what I'm doing right now, right? So what I'm doing right now, and we do, was an, Sunday was an example of that. Obviously, uh, Saturday I was at a friend's house, pool, swimming, active, no television, no iPads, sure. no anything. So sure. that's easy, whatever. That's a, but that's an, that's a one off. But Sunday we came back home, and Sunday I even personally was like, oh, tired. We went somewhere. I was in the sun all day, last two yeah. days at a pool and stuff like that. Maybe I'll just lay around. And our Sunday morning we get up. You know, cartoons came on first thing in the morning. And I kind of snapped myself out of it and said, you know what? There's uh, the stuff I want to do. I wanted to get the cars washed. I wanted a meal prep for the day. I want to make sure I got a training yeah. session in. And so like, I need to, I need to do this. And then instantly took Max with me to do all those things. Right. Maybe so, like a family thing. Yeah. So we, he, I mean, he literally washed the cars with me. He did the laundry with me. He helped meal prep with me. And so all day we were physical and, and doing those things. What's great 
And I'm lucky right now at the phase he's at because he's not at your guys' kids' age, which they may look at you like, F you, dad. I'm yeah, good yeah, to, yeah. to wash your car today. You know, this is child labor. You know, yeah. so that's <laughs> where my son is so, he's so young that he's just so excited. It's fun. Yeah, he wants to yeah help. it's very fun. So I'm I, that it's, so I guess I have figured it out for this phase on how to do that yeah. and, and how to make it work. And, uh, and God, he's so, he's so cool to watch, uh, to, we did laundry together and I told you guys before, it's like, you know, one at a time and he's so funny dude. Cause he's, uh, he's starting to talk more and more and we're at this new phase where, uh, the last phase we just came out of was, you know, the, the words are coming out like crazy. He's repeating almost anything I say, but now he's saying things that like, I didn't even know he knew or he, that's fun. I yeah. Love yeah. That. Yeah. Like, like he dropped something and he dropped something. He goes, Oh, dropped it. And I went. Yeah. yeah. Without me saying it first, which uh, that's what's happening right now, which is really, really cute to watch him. I love that. Watch him do that. I love that so much. No, it's you. you it's not climate change, though. I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> of all the things, you know, by the way, yeah, how many do you think there's some people that are buying into of that? Of course. It's you know so what? The, okay. Here's how you know. This is what I hate the most, right? That and what they're doing is they're actually hurting. The cause. The cause. Yes. Because most people look at that and go, that's ridiculous. And then what you want to extrapolate is it's all political and it's bullshit. Yeah. But it's like, no, what they're doing. Yes, there is there is political power behind any issue. And that's what's happening. What they're trying to do is make a case so that they could push you in a particular direction. And everybody's scared now of <clears throat> climate change. Did you hear what it's doing to kids? Dude. It's making them fat. It's like, what else can yeah. we throw out there to make no, Susan? Afraid? You buying chips for your kids every day and letting them watch all TV and play video games all day is what's making <laughs> what's your, your kid fat. Dude, Give I, me an excuse. Yeah. I, oh, I have got, I have got a kid story for you guys. Okay, so I'm with my, I went over and visited my best friends and their kids. They're a little bit ahead always than I am, right? And uh, one of our favorite things to do is, you know, this is, I guess, of, of, at this phase that we're in our life or season we're at. You know, kids finally all go down. We put them all asleep, and then the adults get to stay up late and and kind of talk. And of course, what do we? I'm talking about the kids and and crazy stories. And my buddy shares this. He goes, uh, you know, he's because again, he's a little bit ahead of me. He goes, "Boy, man, I got my first uh, first learning uh, curve on uh, arcades because I was sharing with him how I took Max the arcade and like he was on the motorcycles. Oh, yeah. we're doing all these oh things. I saw the videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so he was cute. like loving that whole experience, yeah, right? So that was a bl absolute blast. And he's like, blast. He's like, oh, let me tell you my learning experience with arcades. He, so you know the game. You guys have, at every arcade has this and pizza parlor with the claw yeah. that comes down and yeah. never never wins the never, gift or whatever. Never, so never. listen to this shit. So he takes his boy to go because he wants to, the kid wants to do it right. So okay, he does it. He wins the first try. Done. He goes. This was the worst thing I ever oh. did. Was <laughs> again, win. bro. Again. So then every time they go to the arcade, he wants to go play that, and then he fucking flips out when they don't win. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's been with both no. mom and dad, he's, and she, he's been with his mom. His, his mom's t chiming in, tell a story. Janice tell a story, and she's like. Oh my God. She goes, anytime we see that thing, he wants to do it. And then when I fail and I can't get it, he cries and says, Daddy can do it. Daddy can do it. You end up buying a stuffed animal for $150. And you keep putting the money in. Like, I'm like, nah, what dude. are the chances the first yeah. time you do that game with your little three year old yeah. that he sees I will, you win? I will I wonder, forever. I wonder this, he thinks yeah. you're supposed to win. I wonder the statistics on like, you know, gamblers that like become addicts. Like if it's, they won the very first time and then they're just, oh, I like, bet I'm you. In, I'm I bet you that is that way. I, that's I can tell you that I've had experiences like that. Like the first time I've learned learned certain gambling games and I actually was successful. Those are the ones I, I'm my favorite. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy how it's gonna happen. Again. I mean, I'm an adult and that imprints. So imagine when you're a child and you don't Bro, understand even more odds. powerful. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sucks. Bro, yeah. I die laughing because yeah. that's something that would, I wouldn't yeah, even have thought of. That's like, the worst. But one. I will like, now when I do that. Win. I will intentionally lose the first time on purpose if I ever do that game with him because I don't <laughs> want him to think that we win every dude, time. I, I was a hero once because we went to we were at a carnival and there was like you had to throw the ring on the bottle oh, and yeah. they had this huge stuffed animal pig and my daughter's like i want that i want she was like six i want that i want that and i said nobody ever wins and i'm trying to explain they, like, to her grease the uh, uh it just there, there's a lot of tricks yeah there's, and i'm like the, nobody the ever shapes wins. are like a little oval yeah, the, the shapes are off like... no but i undersold it so hard finally she's like please papa i want to say fine and i want it 
I was a hero. For wow. Him. Oh dude. yeah, dude. Walking around with this big ass pig. You know, my dog's all You know proud. that's you know that's what they do with the basketball hoops, right? They they Make bend them. Smaller. Yeah, uh-huh. they bend them so they're more like an oval. Oh, they just yeah. barely because fit a, a real basketball hoop is actually if you actually take a shot, like if you look above and you look down, it's you can almost fit two basketballs in a in a regular basketball hoop. But that those carnival yeah. ones. Now you know the ones they where you th- bend them. You ever seen the ones where you throw the ball in the basket? Sneaky. It looks like a softball in the basket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You ever do it and it always bounces out? Yeah, yeah. And then the guy shows you that he can do it every time. Yeah. Like the guy operating, you know, you know what the trick is? What? Okay. The back of it, the back of the basket is springy. So you'll throw yours in, it always bounces out. So what he'll do is he'll take the one that bounced out, he'll put it in there, be like, watch, it's easy, and then throw his in there. And what happens is it is it hits your ball that was in there, doesn't bounce out. Uh, I actually watched the video. Wow. No, they, wait, 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 explain that again. So, the, so you're trying to throw the ball in the basket. The yeah, always the bounces basket out. Right. It's always a big ass prize. So it's the ball that's bouncy? So it, no, it's the back of the basket. So then what he does is you try to throw it in and then he'll pick your ball up, put it back in there and be like, watch, it's easy. And then he stands back. But the reason why it doesn't bounce out is because he put your ball in there the first. Ball, uh, so, so it hits, that, you, so so it hits your ball and goes yes. into the spring. I watched a whole video. On <laughs> wow. So I called the guy out after doing that. <laughs> yeah. So he shows me and he go, I go, wow, that's cool. I said, leave the ball in there and I'll do it again. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> hey. All Not right. Today, buddy. yeah. Those, uh, what, what are those like metal... Um, uh, they look milk, like oh, milk bottles or whatever. Yeah. yeah, they're like weighted on the bottom and everything. Like and I, I remember seeing somebody else explain this to me too. Had so to it's knock like, over. yeah, because it, the, you know, sometimes they'll knock over if you get like the perfect throw. Yeah. But for the most part, like they'll reform and like balance and and you know not fall off. What's the uh, history of carnival games. tricks? Like where did like and they're all manipulated like that. You're yeah. saying to to make you lose of course eighty percent of the time, of or else they wouldn't have any making. Bro, they're hustlers, people. dude. So from I don't I, I don't know if this is true. Okay, so this is all this is all what I heard. So remember, I'm a '90s kid. We heard a lot of shit that we think is true, but I heard that they take these people who are like at risk or drug addicts or whatever. And then they give them jobs and then they travel around mm. and apparently it helps them because they have a job. I don't know. That's what I heard. Hmm. But I believe it. because So they can just swindle everybody. No, I don't know. I, yeah, but where did the, like the hustle, like was it always like this, this carnival hustle where there was somebody who was doing it and they manipulated the game from the very beginning? Yeah. Like, so because they traveled, uh, now I don't know if they, if they're as bad as they used to be, but because they traveled from town to town, remember this was before internet and stuff, they could rip you off. Mm-hmm. It's like snake oil salesmen. Yeah. They would rip you off and then go to the next town. Yep. And then everybody got ripped they off. You get over all there. mad, but then you're out. Yeah. The next town doesn't <laughs> know. It's about the same it. thing with that like uh, cup game <clears throat> and the ball where they like hide the ball. Yeah. And like they're really good at that, like on the street, and they just hustle everybody's uh, money. Yeah. yeah. What's up, y'all? I'm gonna give away Maps Strong. Today's is a strongman inspired workout program. A little different though. Here's how you can enter to win. Go to uh, Mind Pump Clips. Subscribe there, then come back, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, and then leave us a comment in the first 24 hours. I know it's a lot of instructions, but that's good because that means most of you won't do it. So the very few of you that do will have a good chance of winning free access to Map Strong. Again, subscribe to, Ma- to Mind Pump Clips, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications to this channel, leave a comment under this video in the first 24 hours. If we find your comment and you meet the criteria, and you might be the only one because most people are lazy, you'll win free access to Maps Strong. Also, we got a sale going on right now. Maps Starter, this is the introductory strength training program, is 50% off. And the Prime Bundle, which is great for mobility, correctional exercise, getting you connected to weak body parts, that bundle is 50% off. So both of these can be found at mapsfitnessproducts.com, but you have to use the code AUGUST50 for that discount. All right, here comes this awesome show. Dude, I tell you, oh, I didn't tell you guys. I got punked so hard this morning. <laughs> By who? Hard, bro. Three old Russian men <laughs> punk the shit out of me. Lifting? No, in the oh. steam room again. Oh, the uh, steam room. So I'm working out this morning. The steam room chronicles. I love yeah. it. And I'm just <laughs> ego this morning, right? I'm lifting heavy. It's like, oh, I feel like an animal. I go in the steam room and these three old Russian dudes walk in and uh, they're like, do you mind if I make it hotter? I say, oh, yeah, go ahead. So they throw the water on the steam. It's like, Psh. and the guy goes, you have big muscles. I said, yeah, oh, thank you. He said, how long have you been working out? So we talked for a second. He goes, you mind if I add more? I said, yeah, go ahead. Throw some more water on. So now I'm audibly breathing. <laughs> <laughs> he hears me. And he, they, then they start speaking Russian. And he starts laughing. And he goes, yeah. you have big muscles. That's why you cannot last. I said, what? <laughs> I said, did you say I can't last? He goes, ha, 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 ha. And he goes, I add more? I said, okay. <laughs> this fucker added water. As soon as the steam's done, adds more water. So it's just constant steam in that freaking You're room. baking like a crab. Baking. 
baking in there. And I'm like, Skin I can't, birdie. bro. They were laughing the whole time. He goes, you were like, and then, and I'm laughing. I can't, I'm like, I can't, I had my eyes closed because I couldn't open my eyes. <laughs> your eyeballs, <laughs> you know it's hot. I, I couldn't open my your, eyes, your, dude. Your eyeballs. Yeah, no, I had the towel in front of my face and I'm talking to him. I'm like, no, like this is too hot. I'm like, how are you guys doing this? And he goes, you are like a sports car. And I'm like, what? And he goes, always in the shop, always broken. He goes, you got you, know, you got the practice ward. I walk out I'm like, these fucking old guys. Are just, and they were laughing in there speaking Russian. Do you know the hack just is the, the you know the hack is to put the towel over the head, right? Yeah. So that's the hack. So your eyes, my, my, my well, no, was so you're, you're, so part of what gives you that, like, I got to get out of here. Is oh, your, your, your head. Yeah, your head heats up so hot and your brain says, get the fuck out of here. Oh, I'm going to do that next time. So you put a towel over and just that, mm. the temperature of keeping the head down by like 10 degrees, you can push. Way that makes it. a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. So, you can put, that's the, so this that's weekend, the sauna hack for you. So you were, you were talking about these games and gambling. So I was in uh, Re uh, Ta Tahoe <laughs> on the Nevada side. I went there with my cousins and my buddies. Which, South by Lake. the way, I haven't hung out with those guys like all together for at least I want to say eight years, maybe. I didn't realize it was a guys trip. I thought it was a family thing you were doing. No, this, and they sure. go every year, every other year, and I always don't go. So they call me Santa Claus because I never come out. You only come out once a year, like Santa Claus or whatever. <laughs> so I haven't gone a long time. So I finally went. And uh, I'm just too old for that, dude. I'm just way too... Bro, midnight hits, and I'm, like, planning my escape. Like, I got to go to bed, dude. <laughs> These guys were drinking and just up and uh, gambling. I'm like, I can't do this. Which is crazy because some of them have newborns too, right? Some of them have... I don't know how yeah. they... they Your just, brother was there, right? Everybody was yeah. just... They were just going. And I'm, like, tired. You know, ten literally, by 1030, I'm looking at my watch, and I'm like... Yeah, I'm going to be gone about 30 minutes. I'm going to throw a smoke bomb in his face. <laughs> and they know, too. I got to go to the bathroom real quick, guys. You better come back, Sal. And we know you're going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> I got to go. It's dude. like you have the perfect amount of drinks. Like, you know, you're going to have a great time. Yeah. Then there's like, dude, have more. I'm like, oh. no. Like, I, I had like, that I argument. figured it out. I had know? that argument with him. Come on, do a shot. A shot? I'm like, I'm 43, bro. I'm going to yeah. do shots. I'm like, I know. There's no need to ever do a shot. I'm like, it's... I know just how much alcohol I need. All right, dude. I don't want to go more than that. Yeah. But I can't hang, dude. Those guys were all night up and, you know, two o'clock, three I'm like, Duh. well, they must not like have any release. You know, like it's like the one time they get out of the house. House and then it's like maybe I don't do know. it all at once. I was done, dude. I have done. Friends like that. <laughs> Fried. Next day, I wake up. I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. What do you do for the hangovers right now? Oh, so uh, no. You know what saved my ass over there was uh, the green juice. So I did organic green juice during the day because obviously we're eating garbage all day long. Um, and then the red juice I would have with a little bit of caffeine, and I did some pure uh, in the day. So during the day, I had my I'd bring a water bottle. Like we okay, so we rented a boat. Yeah, and we were out on the lake, which is just spectacular. Yeah. Just one of the most beautiful places in the world. And uh, the, I was drinking the green juice mixed with pure during the day while we were also. These guys are all drinking, and then you're over there on your green juice. I have my water bottle. What's in your water bottle? I'm like, just water. I don't want to sound like <laughs> just water, guys. <laughs> I'm optimizing right now. Yeah, but it was uh, it was gorgeous out there. What a beautiful. How was the weather? It was eighty, like, 80s? like mid eighties. Yeah, good time to be out there right now. Um, just just spectacular. Or just one of the most beautiful places in the world for sure. But yeah, dude, that's it. Where did you guys did you guys stay in a hotel or an Airbnb? Would you guys stay no. in? <laughs> no, like seven of them stayed at my cousin's house, which makes me laugh because I'm like, you're a bunch of grown men. You're gonna sleep when you sleep on the couch. What are you guys doing? <laughs> but a bunch of them slept at my cousin's house, and then me and my cousin and my buddy got some rooms over at uh was it Harvey's? Harvey's oh, over yeah. there. Oh, so you were in the casino. Oh, in the casino. oh, and then oh, you'll be proud of me, bro. Yeah. So you guys you know how I, I never gamble, I don't like gambling. Yeah. You so gambled. My, my buddy Eric. That's so funny. You'd be proud of me, bro. I gambled. Yeah. <laughs> I did degenerate things. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. My buddy Eric, he 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 plays craps. <clears throat> and so, and you know, you know, what I've always told you is that I I just it looks so complicated. There's so many things on the table. Yeah. I know the gist. Oh, did you learn how to play? So I watched for an hour. And while he's playing, he's explaining to me why the odds, playing. how you bet here, why they bet there. I'm like, what's happening over here? What's happening over there? So after about an hour, an hour and a half. I said, I think I, I kind of get it. And I could see how craps actually, you get slight odds are in favor of the player if you know like how to play, right? Well, they're not in favor of the player, but they're the closest to splitting a 50-50 house odds is any other game. In the, it's like the best. Yeah, and he was, and tell the payouts are the and he was telling me, play the odds. Don't yeah. play with your emotions. That's right. And yeah. That's right. And, and he goes, and come up with a system, how much you're going to bet, yep. play the odds, and stick to it. Yep. So that's what I did. And I won. Eh. I literally won. See, I won. That's how I got. You asked earlier exactly how I got hooked. Is I finally learned how to play, yeah. understood the odds, had a system, 
played the system and won really really big the yeah. first time. Yeah. And like after that, I was I was done. Oh I was yeah, toast. I, I won seven hundred dollars. Oh, oh yeah, seven hundred bucks. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, it was about three hours. Now you know why I love the game so. I know. Yeah. I was like, dude. Not to mention, so the real reason why I switched. So I used to be a big poker player, and casinos don't give you any comps for poker. Because you're playing players, oh, so you're not really playing the house odds. They, they don't win hardly. They make like they they make a little bit of the uh, what you call. I forget what you call it. Every time the the dealer scrapes his his couple bucks for every pot or what that, but they make no money off of poker. Got it. So they don't want you playing poker. They want you playing. Plus, slot. poker's long, right? Yeah, you can yeah, sit there long. For a long so ass time. I could take a hundred dollars and play for eight hours. Yeah, of poker. If you're a good yeah. poker player, you could do that. So yeah, the, the, the casinos don't want you playing that. They want you doing slots, which is the fast. So slots pay out the best. Craps pays out really well as the second best. What's right? that one game? But Kai Bao Bao oh, Pai Gao Pai Gao that one's supposed to have good at it's, odds well right? the, you push a lot so it's like I, I play that game so I can get drinks you know for free <laughs> <laughs> I hack the system I'm here there. for the drinks yeah I'm here for the drinks dude. well like, you know yeah. what I noticed is I, I noticed the amount of superstition yeah oh yeah with craps players oh I'm very much so that way oh of course yeah, so yeah. first of all there was one guy that was rolling and that's where I was making my money because I would bet that I don't know what it's called where you could bet like, oh, he's gonna hit an eight at some point and you let yeah. your money ride and all yeah. this, right? But every time he would get the 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 die, yeah, he touched them a particular way. Oh, yeah. Then he grabbed them and threw them. Then my buddy's gonna roll. And he's his superstition is so obvious, I was almost embarrassed. He's like, bro, come on, stop doing that. But everybody does it. He yeah. gets the dice. And then he does this with his finger. He rolls it around until it's on a six. And then he rolls the other around yeah. until it's on a six. Then he pushes them, literally, like push has to push them like this, has to pick them up a particular way he throws I'm, them. I'm like, is that your thing? And he goes, ritual, yeah. dude. I have yeah. to sit, he goes, if I you mess stand, that up, I, just, I don't play. I have to stand at a certain part of the table. <laughs> it has to be a three two stack. I rub the table one time. I grab two dice. <laughs> <laughs> rub the table. That's right. What? Just 100, yes, 100%. I have a, <laughs> hey, it is just like it. So, by the way, you can look this up too. Like, so the the op, the well guys that really like pay attention to this stuff are like some people just kind of see what others are doing and then they create their own thing, whatever. But the idea is actually to try and get the dice to roll the least. It increases your your odds. So the more the dice go bouncing all over the place, which is why they make you hit the hit back. The, oh. They want you to hit the back so it kicks off and throws even more rolls. So when I'm tossing, I'm tossing and I'm trying to land right before and, that. So it's right in the corner to, to minimize the amount of rolls. So you have more control of the the dice and consistency. So I, that's all you're trying to do is to create consistency. Does that really work? Yeah, of course. Of really? Course. Yeah. Is it I mean, science? I mean, or are you just saying that? No, of course. There's, no, there's <laughs> look up, look it up. I feel like it's bullshit. No, no, not at all. I mean, it's like so, just it's like a batter, of just like a just like a batter gets up before he goes to, to and he yeah. takes his cleats and he does his whole yeah. routine or that. It's to get into flow and to get a rhythm. You're you're the idea of the of the sequence of all that stuff you're doing. Everyone being different is to get in the flow of the toss so the toss is consistent. Yeah. So if you're if you bet and you're trying to avoid a one and eleven. So if you hit a seven, you want to mimic that exact throw. Do you always have the same number three two? Three, 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 yeah, three two. Yeah. See my buddy was six six. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and everybody has and and again the the point is because okay in, in craps you don't want one and eleven or excuse me seven uh seven one or eleven when you first come out will pay you but well, you don't want a seven and crap out right yeah, yeah, yeah. so I just want to not roll a seven so it's like whatever whatever order your dice are yeah. that you find when I throw consistent I don't hit a seven for a long time so that's the idea is that you're trying to I, so I broke a couple cardinal rules because I didn't realize it was so, so superstitious one of them what does that say right there uh it's not, it seems that there is some type of technique to it. Absolutely. It's a physical skill which requires hours of practice. I believe, master. so the times where I've won big and I've been really, really hot and I've rolled the dice for a half hour, 45 minutes, which yeah. is you're going to make, if you're betting correctly, odds, like yeah. you're saying in a system, if all you have to do is roll for 10, 15 minutes, you roll for 30, 45 minutes yeah. and you you could make thousands of dollars because you're, or if anybody else rolls for 30, that's all, all I need is a, a rotation of table, one person to roll for like 15 minutes. I always recoup my money back. And if someone rolls for 30 or 45, I'm making big money. Wow. So, and that's what you're looking for. So someone. I made, I made two mistakes. One was a casino mistake. I took my phone out because I was going to take a picture of my, my chips to uh, send to Jessica uh -huh. and like, don't take your, they're not allowed to take a picture yeah. at all. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, because of cheating or something yeah. or whatever. So that, then I made a mistake that's more of a superstition mistake. So I'm asking my buddy questions. 
Yeah. While we're playing. Oh yeah. So uh, and the guy's about to flow. throw. Yeah. And I'm like, so he do, you don't want him to throw snake eyes. And he looks at me, he's like, don't fucking say. Yeah. yeah don't yeah. say. Don't it say as you're the throw. Sh- <laughs> don't say it out loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bro, the dirty looks I got at the That's table. Like, don't yeah. hit the golf ball in the water. Yeah. You don't want to ever. People looked at me like he said the word. You know. <laughs> he said the <laughs> yeah, word yeah. snake eyes. I'm like, oh that, shit. Or your hands hanging over. Why someone's? You probably saw someone do that, right? When someone's on the dice, there's always that one guy who has hands that are like hanging in the pit or like that. It's like, dude, get your hands. It's intimidating, bro. Yeah. We were earlier we were talking about like tricks and, and stuff like so I I found out that um, you know in Michael Jackson's um, Smooth Criminal video where he like leans really far over yeah, 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 and yeah. it's like crazy it looks like he's on strings yeah. or something attached to him. Well, I guess that he actually had shoes that besides they're like reinforced on the inside, but and on the bottom of the heel had, elevated had like a hook. So oh, so it stuck. To it the had floor? like a, a a metal hook and they had like a rod that kind of came up from the ground and he slid his heel on there. And so that way it allowed him to then push his toes to the front. No way. And then lean like crazy. So on he that. cheated. Yeah. He cheated. <laughs> wow. But it was a great illusion. Did you know that the dinosaurs I did not well, know that. Did you know yeah. the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park are not real? It's stupid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Of course they cheated, bro. Come Everything does it. <laughs> Everything Did you fun. see the list that Doug brought up on all the dice? Yes. All the all the strategies and the rules and all that stuff. I like think that? those are written by casinos. <laughs> to make you you know what I mean? To make you want to play. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah. Throwing like yeah. The awesome rule, odds you know, out there. Hacks the casinos yeah, don't want you right. to know. You know, so, totally. hey, you want to talk about some other gambling, okay? Metaverse. Uh buying real estate oh, in the metaverse. Let's talk about okay. this. Okay. Buying real estate in the metaverse in November. Okay, not even a year ago. So, like, what is that? Eight months ago or whatever, eight, ten months ago. Uh the there was sixty-two million dollars. Uh, a month in in metaverse real estate transactions in November. This past month, it just registered at six hundred thousand, so down ninety nine percent. So what you're saying is down buying fake property <laughs> is it actually in, that in great of an investment? Yeah, in, property where there's a limitless supply of real estate. Yeah, is not a good idea. <laughs> Weird. Who well, saw that? You coming? know what? Well, if you were somebody who bought in January of last year or the year before and then sold in November. I think that's the ticket. I think yeah. right now the ticket is when they come up with something like this, think to yourself, I wonder how many yeah. morons are going to jump on this. And that's when you if invest. If you know that a lot of morons are in, you got to get it. Yes. And then get out. Yeah. Speaking of morons, speaking of morons, you know what I love more than anything? Ego Sal is going to talk right now. So here we go. Mm, all right. <laughs> I love My it. Favorite cell. I love it. <laughs> Again, I love it when we say something and we get, you know, a lot of people counter us and ridicule us for years. Mm. And we say, no, we stick to our guns. This is true. This is what happens. This is what we experience. We train lots of people. This is the truth. Yeah. And then studies come out and say, oh, yeah, oh. you guys are right. Guess what? Guess what? Another study came are you out. You about the frequency thing? That's yeah. right. That is right. So, study came out, really good study showing that. Training muscle groups five days a week produced better gains than training muscle groups two days a week with the everything being controlled. In other mm-hmm. words, all things being equal, volume, everything being equal, five more frequency builds more muscle, which is look, if anybody who has MAPS anabolic or MAPS aesthetic, yeah, they've for example, it. like this is those programs are based off that MAPS anabolic. Three full body workouts a day, but you also do trigger sessions on the off days, which really is about that frequency. Maps aesthetic, you do uh, focus sessions, which is about frequency. And people always tell us, you don't need to do that. Studies show two days a week is all you need. Anything more than that? And we're like, no, it doesn't work that way. I th- we've experienced yeah, this the counter a, a study that we recently just read? recently, yeah, about uh, it, there being no difference between like a few days a you week know versus the, you know what the problem frequency? with that is if you're hitting chest twice a week hard. And then another body, and then another uh, article is showing that you're hitting, uh, you know, the same volume equated more or whatever. A lot of compound lifts work a lot of muscle groups, so it's hard to say. Well, the biceps here they're working twice a week, but yeah, but they're also working them another couple of days a week with back. So that's where it gets a little iffy. Um, frequency works every time. And then one of the arguments I heard for this, which was really cool, is they they were saying that the the days in between, so in other words, you know, I did, uh, you know, three sets today, three sets tomorrow, three sets a day after. That 24-hour period is like a long rest period, and then you're training that body part again. So it's not as it's not enough to be more of a recovery, but rather like a long rest period, and you're, you're, the adaptation signal 
is what's really taking over versus not mm, healing. Not to mention, you have to factor in skill acquisition. Yeah. And we that's know, the biggest thing. Yeah. And we we know this, and uh, and this isn't debated at all in sports. Yeah, getting good at a sport or Everybody getting good. Knows that. Yeah, good at getting good. Anybody would tell you like, hey, you want to get really good at swinging a golf club? Should I practice? Two times a week, every week for four hours, or should you go every day for an know, hour? For an hour, yes. Like everybody would like, they would be unanimous. Everyone would be like, "Oh, for sure, practicing yes. this your swing yes. every day for an hour in golf would be much better for you." The irony in that, when it comes to when it comes to building muscle, there's this huge debate because of recovery time and the other yes. thing and your intensity and all the other yeah, variables. But the Soviets, uh, you know, proved that already with uh, the way that they train their Olympic athletes. Listen, so. if the best studies on strength. <laughs> come from sports that are uh, highly regulated and where there's lots of where the where the results are objective bodybuilding there's a lot of truths that come out of bodybuilding but bodybuilding is by is is not an objective sport you win or lose based on how you look olympic lifting powerlifting it's who lifts the most weight it doesn't matter who lifted the most yeah. so their training is so special it's so scientific especially olympic lifting because you had whole nations in you know countries competing on a world stage, especially during the Cold War, when if you won more gold medals, it was your way of showing that your system of you know political system was superior. It was like a bragging rights. Yeah. So the Soviet Union spent a lot of si like a lot of money and a lot of science on figuring out how to make their athletes the strongest, and they kicked ass doing this for a long time. When the Iron Curtain came down, they, a lot of their coaches came here and we started kicking ass. Yeah. But frequency, man. So you're better off doing, you know, instead of doing like you know. Three hours of workouts in two workouts or three workouts, you're probably better off doing 30 minutes a day, mm -hmm. where you hit everything but less. But so the volume is the same, same total set, same volume. <coughs> it's just more frequent. The, and the, I look, I know this. The, if I want to get good at something or strong at something, that's exactly what I. The do. biggest yeah. challenge I think with that is is knowing how to modify intensity, mm. and it and it, it it's really tough because we've we've promoted this like beast mode and yes. crush it and like these this like intensity model of intensity is what promotes this this growth so much that when people hear these frequency studies that come out and go oh okay i need to train yeah. more frequently and i can build more muscle i know the but they, they think it's got to be they're going to be just as exhausted with all those that's frequent right workouts as they that's were with right the, yeah. and so it's really hard and i i've i've been challenged with this and i know better i've I, i've read this i've read the studies i understand the science i know what yep. i need to do intensity wise yet i still fall into that trap of being in the workout and being like i, I don't really feel it that much i need to get it a little mm -hmm. bit more let me do another set yes you know or let me stack a little bit more weight on okay yeah now i feel the burn but then i gotta remember i gotta come back tomorrow or the next day and do this again and if i'm really sore going into that again i'm i'm not allowing my body to fully recover and i'm yep. over applying intensity so what i and so it requires you to be able to do this lift and go like i kind of felt like i worked a little bit and then the next day be like oh maybe i feel my chest i'm yeah. not sure but it's okay because you're training it so frequently you want to be more like that exactly. than you want to feel like oh shit i hit chest yesterday. listen intensity that's a it's a variable it's a factor in training it's an important one i'm not saying it's not important but just like sets and reps and tempo you got to manipulate it and you can overdo it you can rely and intensity in the fitness space is oversold intensity is everything in the fitness space yeah. that's false it's a factor, but it's not the only factor. And you have to, the intensity is important when you manipulate it, not when it's high all the time. When it's high all the time, inappropriately high all the time, you're going to get fry yourself. Your body just doesn't progress. I learned this, look, you know, everybody knows the story, right? With MAPS Anabolic. What I observed in my blue collar family was that the body parts that they had that correlated to their, their, their work, like the plumbers and the mechanics, they're not go they're not cranking on shit to failure every day. They do this stuff, you know, 10 hours a day every single day for 30 years. So it's like this mild kind of low, but it's like so frequent. All these people in my family, huge muscular forearms, everything else to look whatever, huge muscular forearms or the male carriers in my family. Big old like ripped defined calves. Why? Cuz they're walking all day long. So the intensity is great, but use it right. Frequency is also great. Use it right, so is volume. So is tempo. So is all these different things. That's you. You put the right pieces together, and what you end up with is phenomenal results. But it's not just about intensity. And I hate the fact that we glorify that. Yeah. So damn much. Yeah. It causes a lot of people problems. Yeah. It really does. You guys see um, Viore running our ad? Oh yeah. So this is our first <laughs> yeah. time we've. Okay. So for people that see that potentially see this, uh, and this is a new thing that we're allowed, and I believe we allowed Viore 
and I want to say Organifi are the only two companies we're allowing to do this, but they're basically, they use our pixel and they go in and then pay for advertising for their company. So they're it's like, we talk about it on the show. They like what we said. That becomes their ad. Yeah. I know it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, but it's coming, it looks like it's coming completely yeah. from us. So we're not, we're actually not paying for that advertising. They're paying for that advertising, but they're using our, our brand, mm -hmm. our message to, to, to I actually quit. got compliments uh, this weekend on, uh, on what I, what I had on. People were, my cousins complimented on it. And then actually some random person's like, hey, where'd you get that shirt? It's really cool. Yeah. I'm like, oh, if you're, and my cousin makes a joke. Yeah, code mind pump or whatever in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I could see. Uh, I should have. <laughs> dude, I, I make the mistake sometimes of like reading comments or whatever. It's just kind of funny. I oh, could God. see. I was making some dudes uncomfortable because I slapped my ass in that commercial. Oh, yeah. yeah. They questioned themselves. I was like, yeah, exactly. I was like, well, you got some things to work through, guys. Yeah. I, you know, I read less. They did look good, though. Oh, where right? are you guys like, at? Yeah, it looks so good. It makes you question your uh, Everything. sexuality a Everything. little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where are you guys at with the comment reading and stuff like that? Like, I, I've, there's comments and then DMs. I just, I don't read very much no, anymore. I've, I, yeah. If it's at all negative, it's just like, oh, okay, you're dealing with some shit. Well, it's inevitable you're going to get negative. Well, yeah. so like, that's how, that's the, the size of the show now totally. is reaching enough people yeah. that I don't care how fucking perfect we say something. To do, <laughs> somebody's going to be upset. Well, there's no changing minds anymore. I've yeah. given up completely I can always, on all I that. I can always tell when someone didn't listen to the show. So they'll they'll read they'll the headline comment on like a clip, yeah, and then yeah. they'll say something that we'd said in the yeah. show, and so then I'll put underneath, you know, if I have the time, be like, well, actually, we just caught them at a certain point of the day where they're just all yeah. frustrated. Speaking like, of Ugh. speaking of comments, uh, I we I saw a couple comments. So a lot of people don't know this, right? If you're not in the podcasting <laughs> space, there's hosting companies where we upload our podcast, and then that company puts it out to like iTunes and you know all these different podcast apps or whatever, uh -huh. and they are putting together now where they're you know piloting where they can uh, put an ad in begin in the beginning and at the end like YouTube does like if you watch YouTube unless you pay for the premium service YouTube will play ads right and you don't control the ads it's YouTube's ads yeah well yeah, we so have I, V shreds on our YouTube yeah, yeah, Beach so body. Like, yeah competing got, companies yeah, and shit yeah, come yeah. on guys no I got a message from some uh, from someone they're like oh, why are you guys promoting McDonald's I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> I'm not promoting Big McDonald's, Mac bro. Gains. Yeah. Well, there was a commercial for McDonald's. And be like, listen, was it me talking? It's yeah. not me, bro. No. Yeah, yeah, we don't. I said, that's the company. I said, I'm sure at some point you'll be able yeah. to pay for yeah. premium service. I'm with not no sure ads. that ad's doing well. Yeah, I saw knows? a couple people. I saw a couple people annoyed by that. And I said, you know, I'm sure that you can fast is, forward, by the way. Well, yeah. And yeah. I also, I mean, it's 30 Real seconds, easy. right? And I also think that the, that's exactly right. I think Lipson is, this is the beginning phase. So, okay, we have a little bit of a, a growing phase everybody has to go through until they have the option to probably pay. Yeah. You know, and then you'll, then it'll be Because Spotify just, has that, right? They so have does YouTube. Yeah. yeah. YouTube has that too. You can pay. Every to not, platform has that. It's yeah. kind of the expectation, yeah. but it hasn't it's, been, so I get it. Right. They hadn't, they hadn't, the Libsyn, which is one of the largest hosting platforms, just didn't do it before and they're probably big enough and they see an opportunity to make a tremendous amount of money by doing it. So um, I totally think that that's the way I think moving. it's, here's why it's a good thing. Here's why I need, because I, I had this conversation with my cousin because we're, you know, end of the night, you know, we're in, we're in the hotel room and I put the TV on and I never watch regular TV anymore. So the commercials come on, right? And I'm like, bro, how weird is it to watch TV with commercial breaks? It's so weird, right? And he goes, yeah, I was watching TV. He went on vacation with his kids and commercials came on. The kids are like, fast forward, dad. And he's like, we can't. <laughs> this is how it is. You got to watch the commercial. <laughs> I'm like, man, we're spoiled. And I said, you know, but what's cool about this is that we have, what, what these services are doing is they're allowing you to use their great services for free. And the ads that they put are short. Like when we were kids, you had to watch commercials for two minutes every freaking seven minutes of TV. Not just two minutes. Each individual commercial was two minutes. You remember in our <laughs> TV time, most television shows were like, Actually, only like fifteen minutes long, and then the fifteen the, minutes commercials. Yeah, fifteen minutes of commercials yeah. broken up every ten minutes. You yeah. had to. <laughs> and I told, and I'm no. like, you know, what's crazy is that we, we they have all these free options where you pay nothing, you get a little bit of commercials. I said, but then they also offer you an option where you pay a, a fee and then you get rid, get of, rid them. of them. I said, this is really cool because it's opening up services for everybody. You pay nothing. Or you pay a little bit and you don't get commercials. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really cool. No, I think it's a great thing. No, no, no. I, I absolutely think it's absolutely brilliant. You know, um, speaking of services like that, uh, streaming services, you know, something that I predicted that happened faster than I thought was going to happen, happened. What? With uh, Disney and Netflix streaming. 
Guess who has more st streaming subscriptions? Disney. Disney has now passed surpassed them. them. That's right. Was that just everybody that got rid of it and jumped back on? No, no, no. It's total total subscriptions streaming wow. services. Uh, so yeah, it's not like they had a biggest bigger month. Now, or when like you that, subscribe like, to Disney yeah. Plus, it's just their content. There's no additional anything, right? I'm trying to think right now. What do no, you mean? it's just theirs. You yeah, know, Amazon yeah, Prime will allow you. Well, no, they have they have they have the the bundles because they own Hulu and they own uh, National Geographic ESPN. and they. Oh, okay. So what you pay for like the most premium Netflix? If you paid the most premium Disney, you're getting like Hulu, oh, Disney. Uh, oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Wow, so they're beating already? Yeah, yeah. Maybe Doug could look it up to give me the exact numbers, but uh, I read I read this morning this morning or yesterday morning. But they just passed them up officially. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. Wow, that was quick, cool. dude. Netflix was like the king of subscriptions. Like it's competitive market. That's yep. it. We're gonna see more of this kind of stuff. Speaking well, what I like what I like about it is that I I mean I and what I why I thought it would back then and is that it's better quality. Yeah. You know, yeah, Netflix Net, is like fast Net, food. Fast food, yeah. They I mean Netflix no doubt has got a huge variety and they put out a lot of content, but Wow, 221 million total subscriptions across all of its uh, offerings. Hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Netflix is 220. Yeah, just past oh, they're it. like they're almost identical, but still they were they they started way late, way yeah, way late and way behind. When by, I when I brought that up, not even a year ago, it, they were they're a legacy, you know. Company. By the way, have you watched old cartoons on Disney Plus yet? Like the ones we grew up. Oh yeah, you guys yeah. know the warnings in the yeah. front. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like this depicts yeah, you know, yeah whatever yeah. blah 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 blah. <laughs> And I'm like, so I, so I, I hadn't, I hadn't seen Pinocchio <laughs> yeah, in dude. a long time. Pinocchio is like, that's an old one. Gnarly. Yeah. I hadn't watched it in a long time. I'm like, oh, and my son sat next to me and, you know, he got Jessica's permission to watch TV because she's super like anti-TV. I'm like, honey, can I watch it? Yeah. Okay, fine. So I put <laughs> Pinocchio on <laughs> and we put it on and then the warnings come up. Right. And I'm like, oh, who gives Pinocchio? Who gives a shit? That's a terrifying cartoon. Yeah. When's the last time you watched Pinocchio? Oh yeah. My I, son was like, I haven't watched it in forever. Ple Pleasure Island. These yeah. poor kids being turned into donkeys. Yeah. All kinds of weird. The guy kidnapping Smoking Pinocchio. And, By the uh, way, yeah. the worst stereotype of an Italian person I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> also played a huge role in that generation of kids being tough as nails. You yeah. Know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> they scared the shit out of you is what yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. But that, but Don't that, go to Pleasure Island. Dude. What, year, a, what year is Pinocchio? That's, that's like old, 60s bro. or earlier. No. Way before. Earl, earlier than yeah. the 60s. Oh, it's yeah, one it's of the early. oldest ones. I know it's up there. With but the, the, the Italian guy that kidnaps him, bro, it's the worst. It's the most racist. Okay, I got to watch it again. First I of all, that part. 1940, dude. 1940. Wow. The, so this guy who runs the carnival, this Italian guy, right? Yeah. He gets mad and he babbles in Italian. It's not even Italian. They just made up a bunch of words. Wow. You guys even use real Italian, bro. That's awesome. This is ridiculous. Dude, you know what else? It's like Snow White was like, um, this is back, you know, in the, that time. It was redone with Betty Boop. And it was like the creepiest like version of, of Snow really? White you've ever seen. Yeah, and it had like these ghosts like doing things like... It was like, I was like, wow, no wonder. Like everything was like terrifying bro, as a kid. Bro, this, the way that they used to teach kids back in the day. 1933, dude. Wow. That's the Betty Boop one. <laughs> yeah. The way that they used to teach kids back in the day was uh, uh, listen to your parents. Don't like do stuff you're not supposed to. Yeah. Otherwise. Yeah. All strangers are fucking You're going to get kidnapped and killed or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like this is how they taught kids. Dude, my mom used to tell me that like, if I like trailed off in the grocery store, somebody would dye my hair and throw me in a van. <laughs> <laughs> and I believed that forever. I was terrified, dude. Dye your hair. It worked, dude. Like, I will not recognize you anymore. Like, I'm like, oh my God, no. The details for her to throw the dye and the hair in there. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, Jesus. They will not just kidnap you. Yeah. They won't, we won't be able to recognize you yeah. and find you. That's hilarious. Is that the order though? Dye hair and then yeah, you the dye van. my hair first, like in the bathroom, and then <laughs> throw me in the van. Well, <laughs> the way that my mom, mom, sorry, I'm going to write you out here. The way that my mom would like scare us and like eating her dinner and shit yeah. was the mailman. So the mailman. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> So the mailman would come, and, she, and no, here's the worst part. It was a, it was a, this was like a long setup. It wasn't like in the moment. Yeah. We're outside playing. Mailman shows up. Oh, watch out! Mailman's coming. What? He's coming. So you be careful because if you if you don't eat, they'll come take you. You know. Like, this was during the, <laughs> the day. Mailman's coming. Then at night we're gonna eat, and then she'd bring it up. And I remember the mailman coming during the day, coming to our house. Oh, better eat this food. Oh my god! <laughs> He's just a oh nice my guy. God. He's just a oh, nice. I have a delivery for you. <laughs> <laughs> I ate all my food. <laughs> that was a 
good boy. <laughs> dude, we used to raise kids fucked up. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh God. Well, the- you know, talking about, you guys just reminded me of something that I actually wanted to bring up and ask you guys' his opinions on this. So <clears throat> I was watching like some of the um, cartoons and stuff that Max has on his iPad. And you know that there's this this the real popular thing that Disney does that's actually so brilliant in so many different levels, but also concerning for me. Uh, like uh, if you have Cars or Toy Story franchise or um, what's the one with Groot? Uh, oh, yeah. Galaxy one. Okay. So he has all these little. So the new thing is they, they do these little six minute cartoons because the kids oh. attention span. So they're like little, little six, I've seen those shorts. Yeah, little shorts. Yeah. So six minute shorts. Now, what I think is really interesting about it, because I I just I now I've seen the cars one, the Toy Story one, like that one didn't dawn on me as much of like what they're doing right now. But then when I saw the Groot one, because Gardens of the Galaxy is very adult humor. Like yeah. my son should never watch that, at least until he's like the early preteen sure, or sure. teens, right? For that's a little I think it's even rated R, right? Isn't yeah. it Ragnarok? Yeah. Isn't it rated R? I don't know. I think, so. I think it's PG-13. Yeah, maybe. Oh, is it only, mistaken, yeah, yeah, whatever. Until he's 13 or whatever. So they have Groot, you know, the little tree character, whatever like that. But they're little shorts about him, right? Little six-minute yeah. shorts about him. And I thought, wow, how brilliant conditioning that is. How long they can stretch that franchise out. Oh, yeah. If they start grooming my son little at, introductions. at three years old, yeah. little introductions of that character, and then he gets to all of a sudden a, a, an older age, and then he recognizes it. And that, I mean, that, that thing That's will- smart. It's brilliant. That's really yeah, smart. Brilliant on their part. And they're doing that with cars, with toy. Like Toy Story has like, you know, the little fork figure and, yeah. and like each character in Toy Story yeah. has these six minute shorts. And so he's watching these six minute shorts on. Now he can't sit. He wouldn't sit through an entire Toy Story movie or sure. he wouldn't sit through an entire Gardens of the Galaxy right now. But he'll watch a six minute short on a and character. And he already knows the character. And he's all he's going to know all That's those really kids. smart. Well, yeah. you, just, you just reminding me, by the way. Brilliant conditioning. Uh, yeah. Oh, so it's PG-13. You just reminded me right now that uh, we were playing music with the family or whatever. And my son put on the song from Up. Mm-hmm. The 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 montage where he meets his wife and does the whole thing. Oh, yeah. They and, crush you in that movie, dude. Right oh, out of the gates. My 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 kids. As the music's going on, oh, this is when he finds out that they can't have babies. This is when they <laughs> like. What a terrible. Yeah, when's the last time you guys watched that that oh, whole scene? Sad, I only watched dude. that movie one time. It was like, enough. It destroys me. Yeah. I can't do it. Just listening to the song. I was sitting. Dude, there a like, lot of Pixar movies are like that. The you know, it's Finding Nemo. Oh, yeah. It's oh, like, it's oh like, don't on, worry. Dude. Yeah. As we were watching it, I told my kids, I said, we're gonna watch bambi yeah. you guys ready to cry you know, <laughs> you, know you know the truth though i and no, i don't know no, have you guys ever tragedy. heard you guys know that right like di- almost every disney movie starts with like a parent losing a parent stuff like that do you know that every i mean a almost lot of them every, do. almost every they lose they lose a parent or well, something, something they tragic get happens well for lion sure, king the dad gets yeah. the, that you know dies That's nemo Bambi. Nemo. Well, Nemo. Oh, mom died. Yeah, almost, they almost lose. A, they almost lose a parent in every in every episode. But so I th- think some people have like a like a real sadistic way of looking at it, like oh shame on Disney. But I think what they do, we're trying to appeal to kids in that situation and give them hope and give I think them. They're just trying to pull your heartstrings, make you. Yeah. No, I think it's. I, do you think half the half the kids grow up in a blended in a blended house where they lose a parent, whether right. it be through divorce or, or right, death right, right, or something right. like that? So. Talk about a cool story, a, a, a way to to tell that story in a positive light yeah. through those through well, those also types it's of movies. The, the hero's journey. I mean, that's sort of the you know the way that they've constructed stories from forever. You know, is to, to start out with tragedy and kind of working your way back to uh, become the hero. Yeah, yeah but the tragedy story. is almost always a parent thing. It's like, like, look it up, Doug. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's a pretty high. How many st- parents die in Disney's movies? <laughs> yeah. No, well, that's, yeah, that's die or leave. I'll or, tell you, though, the, 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 they make uh, movies now. How many, how many of them, like, include drugs and, and drugging, like, you know, like Sleeping Beauty? And, oh, like, I know. You know, uh, Snow White eating All the, the ones apple, before like, 60s. Poison. Yeah. All the ones before the 60s. Dude, and then, and then like, uh, Dumbo, where, like, they're taking psychedelics and, you know, like, they had a lot of, like, interesting they, things. They did, dude. Yeah. They absolutely did. Yeah. yeah, I get sad for different things now, though. Tell me, Doug. It. More than half yeah. of Disney wow. Pixar feature films use oh, death go. or disappearance of the protagonist, mom or dad, wow. as a major plot point. You know, you know which one made me sad too, but only because I'm a parent now. Uh, which one's the one where the where the kid, uh, her emotions and stuff are, are depicted in her in her mind, and it's those characters, those like anger, disgust, mm, right, happiness. What's that? Uh, uh, it's a Pixar movie, I think. Oh yeah, God, I feel like such an idea. Yes. It was really popular. It, okay, what is it? 
Inside Out. Inside Out. Oh, okay. is that the one with the big white? Uh, That's the one my kid like bubble thing or whatever. Cried. He was, okay. He was like, no. Oh, now it him. made me sad because it's a girl. She's a little girl, and she's only got a few emotions in there. Mm -hmm. Then she's growing up, becoming a teenager, and it gets really complex mm -hmm. because as teenagers you go, all of a sudden your emotions get complex, and they show this conflict in her mind. It was and I got pretty smart. Yeah. I got a girl that's becoming a teenager. I remember watching that, like, oh. I'll have to oh, watch that one. I don't, think I've, sad I don't think I've ever sat and watched that entire one. That's the one with the, the big white. Inside out. Like blow up thing. No. Or you have like no, one no, little no. character oh, that's that out? gets angry and he's got like what flames. What is that? No, that's Big Hero Six, and then you get. Oh. That's actually really. That's really fun. What's, like what's Inside Out? What's the logo? Girl he'll, character. He'll show you inside Out. Yeah, it's it, it's actually really good. Yeah. But if, if your kid is growing up, going through that age, and you can see that your kid went from being like they're either angry, frustrated, or happy, all of a sudden they're teenagers and they're complicated. Oh yeah, I haven't mm -hmm. watched this one. It's really good, dude. Yeah, it's really really good. Is it, who is is it? Pixar? Is that what you guys yeah, figured it's out? Yeah, it's Pixar. Yeah. Hey, real quick, do you like soda, but you don't like the obesity? Check out Olipop. These are soda drinks that are good for you. They're actually good for your gut. They're low in calories, like 35 calories per can. There's no artificial anything. And there's compounds in this for gut health. This is a gut health drink, no joke, but with flavors like vintage cola, strawberry vanilla, classic grape, cherry vanilla, my favorite, orange squeeze, uh, and much more. Go check this company out. Go to drinkolipop.com. That's D R I N K. O L I P O P dot com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump, get 20% off and free shipping. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Jackson from Kentucky. Jackson, what's happening, man? How can we help you? I want to know what's on the roof real quick. What's on the roof right Bro, there? Bro, your room is. Yeah, what's on the roof? What interesting. is Interesting. Oh, um, I just got a couple tapestries. I'm kind of a hippie here. I'll give you guys a, a better shot of what's going on. There's a, there's a lot to see here. Kind of got, got some. Pink Floyd poster going on and yeah, some different stuff, and then tapestry on the ceiling, uh, Grateful Dead and such. Yeah. Uh, you know, and sleeves and whatnot. Very cool. So you're a big Justin fan. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. <laughs> Let's party. Uh, I wonder if anyone's ever yeah. smoked weed in that room. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Never have. Maybe. In <laughs> well, lost my pen. It's all good. How, how are you guys doing today? Doing, doing good, good, man. Good, how can man. we help yeah. you, brother? So. Uh, like the question said in the email, um, I do a lot of things, guys. So I've, I've been a skateboarder for 16 years. Sorry, I'm, I'm nervous. I can't believe this is happening. Uh, so skateboarding for 16 years, I've uh, been lifting for probably six or seven now and uh, been a personal trainer for about the last year and a half. Um, so I think my calories, I, I do pretty good around 3,000 and I'm weighing in about 195 pounds, 190 pounds. Uh, I just cut down from 218 and uh, I've kept a lot of strength from that cut. But now I'm wondering where should I be with my calories now? Um, back two and a half months ago, I got injured. I tore the ATFL and the CFL in my left foot and uh, sprained some muscles in my knee, I believe. Um, didn't have to get an MRI or anything. And I've, I've done a pretty good job of my own rehab. But with this injury, um, lifting decently heavy uh, three or four times a week, skating three or four times a week and always being on my feet. Where would you guys think my calories should be if I'm trying to get this leg to heal, perform at a decent level and still trying to get leaner uh, as time goes on? I know there's a lot going on right there, but that's why I wanted your all's help. Yeah, it's a good question. And, and it's, a, it's a common one, right? How many calories should I eat for this particular goal? Now, one thing that I think uh, is important to communicate is that the metabolism is never set in stone in the sense that your metabolism is always adjusting and trying to reach homeostasis. And this happens every second, every second things are changing for it to try to reach homeostasis. So the answer that I can, that I'll give you maybe, you know, right now, but might be wrong tomorrow. So you may be thinking, well, what the heck am I supposed to do? The best thing you could do is observe your body, your energy, how you feel and track and see what those calories uh, correlate to. So Let's say you eat 3,500 calories and that's where you're keeping it. And you're like, Ooh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little excess body fat on my body. Um, bring it down a little bit. Or let's say you're eating, you know, 3,500 calories and you're like, man, I, I, I'm getting lean, but my energy's low. I'm losing strength. I don't feel very good. Well, then maybe bring it up a little bit. Um, so this is really the, the, the best answer I can give you is to pay attention to it on a kind of weekly basis and track. And since you've already tracked before, 
you kind of have a good general place to start, right? You kind of generally know where you want to start. So from there, that's where I would move up or down. Now, if you were, if you never tracked before and had no general idea, then I would give the standard answer, which is track your calories for the next couple of weeks. If you're losing or gaining weight, that'll tell you if you need to bring, bring your calories up or down. I, I like, okay. I like where you're at right now. I mean, for your size and if you're not putting, if you're actually losing body fat and hanging around 3000 calories, like I, I think you're a pretty good, I'm reading two more, uh, more of your question. It says that you do like a couple of low days for like 2000 to 2400 and then you refeed up. Is that what, I, what I'm reading? Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, I've, I've listened to the show for a long time and yeah. uh, you guys were talking about calorie cycling and that was, that's definitely the easiest way it's been for me because um, I've noticed like if I try to do a few low days in a row, which like I, I train in a bodybuilder's gym, I'm kind of in the, not in the wrong spot, but I'm definitely the, not the bodybuilder in the gym. <laughs> so it's like trying to be lean for a stage or anything. So I'm just trying to generally be healthy and lean. So um, with like two lower days, uh, anywhere underneath 2,500 to like 2,200 calories, um, that, that's why I find pretty good for a low day. And that's like, I'm starving, man. Like that, that's crazy to me that I've got my metabolism at, because I can remember 2,500, that wasn't, uh, you know what I'm trying to say there. Yeah. Um, but around, I think like a, a maintenance day is around 3,000 or 3,200 for me. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm pretty active. Uh, I'm always out either skateboarding or taking a walk or something's going on and I, I can never get a chance to really chill out and rest as much as I'd like to. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like where you're at right now. So long as you're seeing what you want, like to Sal's point, you know, this is still like a weekly or every other week kind of check in. And that's kind of when I when I'm adjusting someone's calories and their movement, like when we have a goal of leaning out or something, you know, I, I like to stick to something for a good solid two weeks before I make any radical changes. Right. So let's say that this is where you and I are at. You know, and I'd say, okay, cool. You, sounds like you're you're happy where you're eating. We feel like we're leaning out a little bit. Like I'm, I'm not, you know, so long as you feel like you're healing and getting better every, you know, every few days, or you're getting stronger in your foot and stuff. Then I'm not really worried about that. Then in two weeks, I'm going, okay, let's let's evaluate where you're at. Are we are we still progressing? Are you still leaning out with the calorie intake? And then if you are, I might just keep you on that path. If you feel like, you know, I feel like I've stalled then we might adjust and mess with some of the calories or mess with, you know, in, in putting in 15 minutes of hit cardio a couple times a week or stuff like that. But I mean, where you're at is a very healthy place calorie wise. And if you feel good where you're at, I would probably keep you there until we start to notice you, you, you slow down a little bit and you're not seeing the same results. And then we would manipulate the calories. How's the rehab? I'm, I'm really here that going in a line that you like to the, the biggest thing I've been trying to pay attention to as well not only getting lean, but my, my strength in the gym too. Like cutting down from 218 to 20, I'm definitely not as strong as I was. Um, but I deadlifted for the first time today and uh, in, in three months. And uh, my, my strength is not far off of where it was. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the strength and such. That's and awesome. the metabolism, it's it's staying pretty high. So I, I think I'm in a pretty good spot too. And th thank you guys for your opinion. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, um, no, yeah. I, I think- Past performance was a big, a big help with uh, speeding the metabolism up too. I really liked phase one of uh, mass performance. Nice. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah, so, dude. Um, you, you mind if I ask how you hurt your foot? Were you, were you, did you, did you probably. screw up a, a kickflip? Was that the move you did? Adam, Adam, Adam nailed Real it. Uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a kickflip. Uh, if if it was a kickflip, I'd have been so much happier than how it happened. Um, so there was a ramp going up, mellow incline, and there was a rail coming out of the top, almost like a rainbow. So I was just trying to, to slap into the rail and take it across. It wasn't a super big one. Uh, brand new shoes, brand new board. I mean, just got to the skate park. And uh, I, I felt like I may have had an imbalance in my hip that day. So I was trying to get it mobile and such. And uh, I was skating probably before I, I was ready to. And the, the ankle, my foot just, uh, here was my board. My foot was just over here and just allowed it to roll Mm. like that oh, and it was dang. it was so loud they, they handed me <laughs> this wasn't the smartest thing to do but i was i was so pissed and uh, uh it hurts so bad because i've rolled my ankle a thousand times this was way more i knew i was gonna be down for a while they handed me a cold beer to put on it and ice it and the last thing i should have done <laughs> was crack that thing and drink, but i totally did i'm like <laughs> <laughs> it was most so, non-triumphant <laughs> <laughs> but did my flipped since the injury the other day um after four or five it gets tired but 
it, it felt really good. Um, so we're, we're getting there for sure. Yeah, dude, well, you're, you're good in a good deal. place, man. You're, you're on, yeah, you're on the right track, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. Hey, thank you guys. This, this was unbelievable, man. This is a, a, like a, a, a dream, a dream come true for real. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. If we ever up, end up in your area, I want to, I want to come hang out with yeah, you in that yeah, room yeah. right there. We'll go. Shred, uh, I was, I was, in, I was in California a couple weeks ago, man. We're, we're, uh, we're definitely a little bit off schedule on that one. I <laughs> wish that could have happened. I, I, I thought about it while I was out there, but there's no way these guys are going to want to get a lift with me or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only if you're not stronger than us, then we'll yeah, work out. Yeah, with that's, you. Right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's that's All right, man. Thanks All right. for calling in, brother. All right, dude. Hey, guys, you have a great day. You got yeah. it. You know, I uh, uh, it's it's interesting the types of injuries that each sport tends to produce. Like rolled ankles, basketball, super common. Skateboarding, super common. Only because I had friends that. Injured by the way, not because skateboard, not because I played you the sport, but rather because I had friends that did a lot of yeah, yeah, both either sport and um, it, it's a super common, super common injury. Yeah, yeah, we tend to get people that call in sometimes that I think. Mm, they know what to do and they know they want like self-affirming. Yeah. Questions. Yeah. Cause, and, and sometimes I'm like, I'm, I I want to make sure that like we, we help them. Right. Like, or we give them something or, or something. but then sometimes it's like, dude, you're in a great yeah. place. You, it sounds like he's Crushing listened to the show long enough that he's built his metabolism up. Cause it sounds like he's kind of in a new place where yep. he's like mm -hmm. been able to eat 4,000 calories, got all the way to 218. Now he's leaning down and he's, and he's doing undulating it. his calories, yeah. which is perfect. Yeah. Feels good. And he's not lost. He's obviously he's down from two, 218 down to what do you say 190 something yeah. so of course mm -hmm. you're going to be lose a little bit of strength but the fact that he's been able to not deadlift for three months come back and then mm -hmm. feel relatively close to the same strength i mean dude's in a good place right now yeah totally and the undulating of the calories i mean that's that for me was such a uh, such a big deal when i first really kind of figured that out i do that now i mean I, mm -hmm. my calories monday through friday kind of go up and down but they stay relatively high saturday and sunday my calories usually are really low Mm -hmm. And I come back Monday and my appetite's good. It's back. I eat more and it really helps me maintain a lean, but yet, you know, I, I get to keep a lot of muscle type physique versus staying at the same all the time, which psychologically and behaviorally that that'll mess with you. You know, if you're mm -hmm. always low or always high, you end up finding yourself kind of in this position where you feel like you're, you're white knuckling the whole thing. So it makes a big difference. I really feel that what you just said attributes to uh, your ability to keep yourself really lean and fit right now. Like, because I think most people do the opposite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think most people get work and busy and going all day long and then they may maybe miss meals or they're like, they're, yeah. they're, they're, can, they're maybe even lower calorie when they're really active and doing a lot and probably working out, following their routine. And then Saturday and Sunday is normally when people take it off. They take it off their training. Yeah. That's normal. At least one of those two days, they sleep in more than they normally would, or they might lounge around and watch TV, or they're, they're not as active. And then they also, this is when they go out to dinner, or yeah. they have pizza, or they enjoy some, some drinks on Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Like, so I really, I mean, I that was one of the biggest hacks for me staying in shape was learning that if I could win the weekend, like win the weekend, the weekdays were easy. I have a routine. I get up at the same time every single day. Work is so long. Like you're, I'm moving around. Like, and that's it's easy for me to eat the same meals and be consistent. So if I could just win the weekends and be be disciplined on that, it would set up the whole rest of the week. I'm stealing that phrase, by the way. Win the weekend. Our next caller is Chance from Indiana. Chance, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to first say thank you for all the content that you guys put out there. I started lifting about. Uh, three years ago and found you guys at the beginning and really helped me kind of uh, felt like a cheat code of getting in and missing a bunch of the crap information out there. So uh, just get right into my question. Does it make sense for me to do focus or trigger sessions to help target a specific body part I would like to grow, which for me would be my quads and my delts while I'm cutting? And in other words, can I pinpoint growth or development while in a cut, or should I just focus on not losing muscle mass during that cut? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, uh, are, are you running Maps Aesthetic right now? Uh, it cut out a little bit, but right now I'm running Maps Anabolic. Okay. Because oh, okay. you're describing Maps Aesthetic, just so you know. Well, like he says trigger yeah. sessions too. Well, yeah. 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 You know, you know. Um, yeah. So I did start off doing maps aesthetic, but while I was in my cut, I felt like it was a little bit too much volume. Hmm. So I only did about a week or two of that. And then I went back to just phase one of maps anabolic. 
while I was in the cut. Yeah, smart. So, okay, there's a saying in uh, in boxing, which is the best defense is a, a good offense. So when it comes to muscle growth, um, trying to prevent muscle loss is not a good strategy. Trying to build muscle uh, while in a cut is a better strategy. So what's the difference? One of them is you're playing defense. The other one is you're playing offense. Your muscles either grow or they shrink. The best way to prevent muscle loss is to stimulate muscle growth. Okay. Now this means not overdoing it. This means good exercise programming. This means appropriate calories and protein intake and that kind of stuff. So focus sessions, trigger sessions are excellent for building muscle, which makes them excellent for preventing muscle loss. So the answer is the same really. And I would definitely point to the muscle groups that you want to develop the most Yes, because you, you know, okay. you, you, Target can't, them you can't sure. just run endless volume, right? You, you got to be very judicious with volume and where you're, 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 you know, aiming that volume. So I would definitely aim it on the body parts that you're most concerned with or the areas that you really want to focus the most on and then do that. And at worst, you'll just lose less muscle in those areas. At best, you might actually build a little muscle. Yeah. I mean, uh, maps aesthetic was, was created with this, this idea of like, this was getting me ready for a show. So, uh, and I, every show I had a, a body part or two that I was specifically trying to develop. And so even though I know that I'm in a caloric deficit, and that it would be more advantageous to be in a surplus to build the most amount of muscle in that area. Sal's exactly right. Like uh, at that point, I know I'm cutting, I'm losing, I'm, I'm catabolic. I definitely don't want to lose in the areas that I'm trying to develop. So I'm I'm stimulating and I'm hitting that more than usual. So yeah. So whether you're running anabolic, um, I and, and I. But by the way, still to this day, when I do anabolic. I, I don't actually do like this kind of full body trigger session. I actually always do the the muscles that I'm trying to work on or that I care about the most. It's just like I, I'm only I'm only doing a little stimulation for what eight eight twelve minutes. So I tend to focus on the areas that I'm always trying to develop. Yeah, but that same um, sort of protocol applies, right? The moderation of intensity. So you're making sure you're not um, treating it as if it's a foundational lift day, right? So even if you're targeting those muscle groups, you're not trying to overdo it. You're just trying to get a pump and trying to get stimulation there. But you could definitely hyper focus and target those specific muscle groups that you want to bring up. That's that's for sure. Uh, you know, something that you can do and focus on. Yeah. After Maps Anabolic, do you plan on running uh, Maps Aesthetic and changing your calories, or what's the goal? Let's afterwards? leave it up to chance, right? <laughs> Stupid. It's just a, yeah. No problem. Uh, I, I plan on running Maps Aesthetic afterwards. Is, is what my plan was because I'm only going to go into a cut for another you know, a couple more weeks, um, just to kind of get where my, my goal is. And then I was going to run aesthetic in a, in a bulk. Okay. Have uh, you, have you, do you have map symmetry? I, yeah, I just got out of that one not too long ago. Uh, um, good. it's by far been my favorite program. Excellent. Nice. Okay, good. I was going to have you run map symmetry afterwards. Uh, but since you've already run it, aesthetic or symmetry would be a good option after anabolic. But I love symmetry. Yeah, uh, it, it's good. It's the most. I'll probably program. change it before I actually go into the bulk. But it's I keep going back and forth between strong and a, and aesthetic. But I've never run strong, so that that may be the route that I oh, end up another, going. I just a, go back and forth. That's yeah. another great option. So all right, well, cool chance. Well, thanks for calling in. I hope we answered your question. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys. You got it, man. Yeah. What <clears throat> what builds muscle? the best is also what prevents muscle loss the best. Mm -hmm. That's what people have to understand because they tend to train differently thinking, um, uh, you know, oh, to prevent muscle, I got to do this or to burn more body fat, I got to do this. Lifting weights or strength training is best at building muscle, bottom line. So whatever builds muscle the most effective is going to be what's best for your goal, whatever your goal is, whether it's fat loss, cutting, bulking, building, strength, whatever. Now that means you got to change your routine yeah. up. That means you got to phase your workouts, all the stuff that we talk about. But if you get into this defensive play all the time, you're going to miss out. You'll miss out. Well, what about, do Do we have any such a sports analogy, dude? I love it. <laughs> I'm, He's on I'm that, hitting him today. He, he is on that kick right now. <laughs> what do we, what do we have to support like research wise? Would it be beneficial to like, I, I'm in a cut. Okay. Most days. And we just had a caller before this one that like how he undulates his calories. Yeah. And let's say, let's just say Chance's goal is, I don't know, his shoulders and something else. I don't remember yeah. what this is, his muscle. Let's just say it's shoulders, right? So he's going to make his trigger sessions or his focus sessions. Or 
what benefits would you say are there for someone to make sure that the day he trains or the day after he trained his shoulders really well that he's on his higher calorie intake? Oh, that's a great mm -hmm. question, dude. I don't know if it makes that big of a difference because – uh, and there, there isn't. I don't think there is a study or studies to point. This is like directly. a question I'd love to talk to like Lane about because Lane yeah. loves to talk about this. The uh, how calories, right? It's all about calories. Yeah. And if it, if it, the calories equate to a, a deficit at the end of the week, then you're in a, you're catabolic. You're going down. But okay, well, what if I what if I run a surplus though for two days and I I schedule those two days yep. around muscle around group, the yeah, specific around, targeted group. You're yeah yeah. yeah. To, so I mean I, that makes logical build. sense. It really does make logical I sense. Like I never had any. I never had any. Uh, I I don't, and that's why I'm asking you because I don't. I don't remember or recall ever reading anything to support that claim. It just always made logical sense to me. So I used to do this. So when I was now, did you mess with anything different? Specific growth. Yeah. Did you mess with anything different to see if there was a difference between the two? In other words, did you go low calorie? On other days, high calorie on other yeah, days to compare the two? Yeah. Oh, so, okay. And, and so, and again, this that's all anecdotal, right? So me saying that, oh, I felt or thought I saw a difference, you know, it's it's hard to say, right? Because of, you know, everything that I had going on, how consistent I was with everything like that. Like, hmm. what if I didn't do that? Would it, would it have made that big of a difference? I don't know. But personally, it just made logical sense that while I was in a cut, and I had areas that I really wanted to develop, when I would train those muscles, I would make sure that's when I, I actually fed the most amount of calories, was around those. So you timed it. So yeah, I, yeah, I would- That makes logical well, sense. Well, yeah, and you'll be most proficient in your lifts too on that day if you're fueling that, I would assume. Right, because think of if think of your total calories for uh, in a, in a seven-day seven period is 21,000 is your maintenance. 21,000 right. calories is your maintenance. Well, what happens if I- when I train them, the, either the lifts or the muscles that I really, really want to focus on, I put a bulk of those calories around those two or three days, and then I live in a deficit the other mm -hmm. three or four days. Now, are you doing it? Because I do something similar, but I don't know if it's the same. So I tend to fuel my body before the workout, not for the recovery. So I do both. So okay. so what I would do is like it would it would begin on the the that those two, it'd be like a two day refeed almost. Got it. Mm. So I would always try and make. Okay, I want to be fueled in, so I'd want to have energy. Which, be honestly, it only took a meal or two before that lift. So I could have been coming from a real low calorie two or three days, mm -hmm. and then I'm getting ready to go hit lifts that are really important to me or muscles. What's that I'm your training. bump like? Two to five hundred calories. Oh, hour. that so that yeah, that really it depends, Justin. Yeah. Like where I'm at, like because my metabolism has been yeah as, as low as two thousand yeah. some calories to as high as five thousand. So it really depends on where I'm at muscle right. muscle wise. So. Yeah. Um, it would just, I would be, I would be pushing the calories more on that morning that I'm going to be training. On, like, like three, four hours later. Yep. Three or four hours later. So that would fuel that workout good. And then I would make sure after that workout, that was a, a, a on the higher calorie. Day. It doesn't be crazy. I just don't want to be in a deficit. Yes. So if my, let's say my, my, my maintenance was 3000. That would be the day I wanted to be 3,000 or above. And then the next day, I want to be at least 3,000 or above. And then I would go back down to, say, 25 Got it. on the so other day. So day of, day after, and then back on your cut. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I've always done it leading into the workout. And then maybe the same day, like meal after, but never the day after. Or maybe I did instinctively, I, you know, because I've never tracked or gone into the same detail you have, right? I tend yeah. to go by feel. So I got. I'm, I'm really thinking about it. But I know for sure that I consciously try to lead into that workout with more calories. Yeah. That's always the goal for me. Which makes sense because then you're going to get after it more. Yes. But I was also thinking like recovery Recovered. wise, I want to be fed. I don't want to be, I don't want to be catabolic right afterwards, right? I want to, if I could, you know, theoretically prioritize those nutrients to go to building that muscle, I just stimulate it and said, hey, we need this. In this area, right? I just did heavy, hard shoulders, yeah. And then, and I had the fuel to really get after it. And then it was okay. Yeah, I'm going to eat in a surplus, so those those additional calories go to building up. That was my theory and how I how I dieted when I was training. It makes logical sense. I would love to see a study that would look at that. They would just have to control a lot of things. And I do want to also say this: for the average person, uh, this is a lot of splitting hairs for the average person. But if you're that person that's really, you know, kind of dialing things in, your sleep is good, your protein intake is good, your workout programming is good, you want to develop your glutes or your hamstrings, you kind of know what you're doing. This is, I think, makes logical sense. It well, really I, that, I mean, and I'm glad you said that because 
by no means am I being like, oh, that was a huge difference. Like the huge difference was my sleep, my consistency, exactly. my, uh, all those other things. Exactly. But when you were at the level that I was at, when I'm competing at the professional level of bodybuilding, like I'm now starting to to manipulate things like this. Oh, like, you're tracking. That's why I'm saying you yeah, track it's like, everything. It's like, yeah, I'm only going to be eating 21,000 calories for the entire week. Hmm. What happens when I try and make sure I prioritize those calories around the days on the muscle groups that I'm most focused on, and then the ones that maybe I'm not so worried about? I go ahead and let. I I, I would bet I would bet money that what you what you're talking about is beneficial because what you're always trying to do is tip the scale to anabolic versus catabolic. Right. Why not tip the scale to anabolic on the days where you're training the areas of your body that you're most concerned with, and you're not worried so much about being a little catabolic on those other days when. You know, it's body parts that you're really strong and that your body tends to hold on to muscle with. That's you right. Know? Makes a lot of sense. Our next caller is Carlos from Texas. Carlos, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How y'all doing, man? Good. We're good, man. Hey, uh, first of all, I want to say thank y'all um, for everything that y'all do, all the content y'all put out. Um, I know that uh, well, I was just talking about y'all this morning to uh, some of the guys and and they were asking me where I get all this information from. And it wasn't the uh, fitness information. Uh, I was explaining to them what a brony was, um, <laughs> what a pay pig was, and, and stuff like that. So, real important stuff. <laughs> we're changing lives, fellas. Yeah, yeah real important stuff. Oh, man. Uh, no, I appreciate uh, everything y'all do. And uh, I just got a couple of questions for y'all. Um, if you need any background, let me know. But I don't think in, in for these questions, there, there's much needed. Um, the first one I have is, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy doing static stretching and, um, I, I do it last thing in the evening. Uh, and my thought process on that is, uh, I think I heard y'all say that, uh, if we do static stretching, it is our CNS that is telling the muscle to relax. And, uh, so I'm thinking, well, if, if I want to be relaxed and get a good night's sleep, then that'd be the best time to do that. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? I love, yeah. I love that. Great you, idea. You hit the nail on the head, but there's, there's a caveat there, Carlos. The caveat is when you're doing the static stretching, don't hold your breath. Don't push through with intensity. You want to get into the static stretch and breathe and relax into it because yeah. that's telling the CNS that can relax. So that's a very important piece of this static stretching, uh, you know, issue that you're bringing up. So while you're doing the stretch, you want to continue to breathe and try to tell your brain it can relax, tell your CNS to relax. But yet that is the best time. I mean, you literally should get better sleep doing that. And people who have issues where they jump in bed or they feel like they have restless leg syndrome or they feel a little anxiety, I used to tell my clients to do this and it would it, it worked like magic for a majority of them. So that's a, that's a great way to do it. Perfect. Good. Um, yes. And, and I heard you, Sal, one time say that um, – uh, that you were doing a, I believe a yoga class and, and your instructor, uh, you know, you were straining or, or you were tense and she told you, Hey, just, just relax a little bit. So, so I do try to do that when I do my static stretching. Beautiful. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I implemented that also. Hey, uh, my, my second question is, um, I have heard that you can, um, that there are some body parts that you can, uh, work out every day pretty hard, uh, like forearms and abs and, uh, calves. Uh, and I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Uh, I'm not sure if, if that's advice I should follow or, or not. Uh, I've heard that too. Okay. So there's a couple, couple pieces here that we want to break down. One is forget body parts for a second. Look at exercises. Okay. Certain exercises just cause more damage, yeah, more, uh, demanding. more, yeah, just way more demanding on the body. So look at exercises over body parts necessarily. For example, if I use a hand gripper, that's working my forearms. If I do farmer walks, it's working my forearms. But one of them is going to be way more taxing on my body, require more recovery than the other one, right? So look at exercises. Number two, we tend to have body parts that tend to be more conditioned naturally than other body parts just because of our day-to-day -day lives. Um, you know, maybe you walk a lot. So your calves are going to be a little bit, you know, more conditioned than say your upper body. Like when I would train runners, for example, man, if I train their upper body with, you know, anywhere near the intensity they train their lower body with when I'd first get my hands on them, it was just too much. So you want to consider that as well. Now, as far as like, do some body parts 
have the ability to recover better than others. I don't know if it's inherent as much as it's individual. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you use your hands a lot at work, you're, you're kind of doing little trigger sessions throughout the day. You may be facilitating recovery just from moving them more and they may already be more conditioned. But I think the bigger thing is look at exercises. It's exercises more, because I could do leg extensions way more often than I could do barbell squats. Both of them work my quads, you know? So I think that's more of a, I think that's a better it's always a, It's always a calf, forearm, and ab thing. I know. It's always said, and, but yeah. those, those are all areas that we use all the time. And I think for the most we part- function with those all the time. Yeah, so I think most people are just conditioned to use those, mu those three muscles yeah. on a regular basis all the time. And so therefore they can handle more of a, a, a consistent beating. But I also think that opens up an opportunity for actually strength training those areas. That, and I think most people neglect that. Very few people do five reps for forearm exercises. Yeah, Very yeah. few people do five reps for calf raises. Very few people do five reps for abs. So actually, so basically strength training. So instead of like, oh, I want to do this every day, I would I would normally tell a client like, listen, you want to develop your calves. When have you ever ran a five by five type of block for your calves and watch what happens? That was one of the big the, one of the biggest game changers for me when working on my calves was actually switching to five by five because I actually subscribed to the same theory of. I was doing calves every day, but they're always like 15, 20, 30 reps, supersetting, like yeah. burn, 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 burn. Same thing with abs, well, crunches, that's the crunches. Most common thing. It's just like, it, it again, to the point of it being more demanding. Like if the focus shifts and now you're loading uh, some of those body parts with, with exercises you're not quite as familiar with or you're doing it in a different cadence, like a five rep kind of a, uh, a protocol, you're going to get sore and, and you're not going to be able to keep continuing, um, you know, that kind of progress the next day if you're if you're getting that type of a stimulus where it's really demanding and it's it's placing you know those muscles under that kind of strain so um really like what they're talking about for the most part is that they're doing they're conditioned already they, they're doing like multiple yep. sets they're doing body weight uh typically or it's it's really just less demanding on those specific muscle groups yeah that that makes sense okay um and, and i had one more question um so I was wondering if y'all have any quirks or any odd rituals or anything odd that y'all do while you work out. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, I work out in old school, um, in an old school hoodie and old school cotton sweats. And the reason I do that, my wife says I'm crazy because in our gym, it's, it's about, you know, it's, it's a hundred degrees plus, but, the reason I do that is because it reminds me of Rocky when he was in the meat packing plant mm. and he was punching those cow's ribs and breaking those cow's ribs. Um, but Sounds I was wondering if y'all had any weird quirks that, that y'all uh, do while you're working out. Yeah. Well, oh, first yeah. off, definitely. Uh, yeah. I want you to, while I'm answering your question, I want you to think about any free programs you'd like. Cause you just mentioned Rocky. Right? <laughs> <laughs> My heart just swelled with, <laughs> you know what, uh, Carl, let me tell you something. Uh, work out, especially if you work out consistently for years, it's more mental than physical. Mm -hmm. So like any athlete, uh, I don't you know. I'm sure you've, you, 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 you yeah, athletes will wear the same socks during <clears throat> games or they got to tap the, the top of the, door on the way out to the field or, you know, everybody has these rituals. It, do they play a role in your performance? Yeah, man, it's all psychological. Do yeah. I have rituals? You better believe it. Yeah. There's a, I, I wear a wife beater every damn workout. Now I don't always take off my t-shirt, but it's always underneath half the time I take off my t-shirt and then the wife beaters on, but it's always, always on me. Why? That's how I worked out when I was a kid. So it's just, it's just a ritual. I feel it. <clears throat> I love it. It just makes me feel good when I'm working out. I also have Rituals with like, if I'm bench pressing a lot, I'm gonna wear a tight cotton t-shirt. I don't know why. Just that's what I did when I was a kid. Now I like wearing a tight cotton t-shirt. Thunder vest. I bet it's like my thunder vest. I so. mean, I like your I like your athlete analogy because I think I think I'm I'm more quirky when I'm training, right? So so I, the, the, I have two modes of of you know, let's say exercise. I'm either exercising or I'm training. Sometimes I'm just exercising. Sometimes I'm just trying to stay healthy. I know I need to move. I need to go in the gym. I need to lift some weights. I'm not really getting after it. I'm really not trying to change anything big in my body. I'm just trying to stay healthy. When I'm like that, I'm less ritual. But when I'm like training and I'm trying to like improve my physique, I'm trying to get stronger. Like I absolutely have like how I prep, how I get ready to go in the gym, the, to, down to the outfit that I wear, down to the music that I listen to. And I think it's very similar to the athlete, right? 
I think there's there. I think if I'm a, a professional baseball player, every time I get up to the plate or get ready for a game, I have this crazy routine. Doesn't mean I can't go out and hit the ball with my son, and I don't have to have that crazy routine, right? So that's the exercise versus yeah, the training yeah, yeah, analogy. Yeah. Is there's there's times when I'm very very ritualistic. There's other times when I'm like whatever. So, but yeah. if I'm training, I'm very ritualistic. What's your I mean, Justin? Yeah, why do you think I'm into mace spells, dude? Because I'm a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm a Jedi when I'm doing mobility flows, and then I'm a Sith when I'm getting after it. Are you for real? <laughs> no, but I no, just, you I are for real. Shut up! You can't take it back. <laughs> I want, I bet you're thinking that you got the music and shit yeah, in the background. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's in my head. Is like I make the noises, like, zzz, 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 yeah. all that shit. I love it. I'm into it. Carlos, can we give you a program? Can we give you anything? Uh, sure. What do yeah, you want? I have, uh, well, actually I just started, um, anabolic. Uh, I mean, I did the pre-phase cause, cause I just started lifting recently. I, I say recently about six months ago. Um, before that I wasn't doing anything. Uh, my, my most activity was helping with my kids coaching. Um, and so, uh, I just recently started, uh, anabolic. So yeah, just whatever symmetry. you want to throw at me, man, I, I'll, I'll be Glad to take it. Yeah, let's go with symmetry. We'll send you yeah. map symmetry, Carlos. Do that after map anabolic. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, and I got I got a, uh, one other thing, um, <laughs> and this is for uh, ju uh, not Justin. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, my family's gonna gonna freak when I tell them that that I've spoken to the journeyman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on, man. Captain hey, Tiny Beard. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm the jealous of your beard. And Oz. So, yeah, they're, they're going to. Oh, yeah. And, and for Adam, hey, yeah. Adam, uh, anytime you want to throw down on some ribs, you let me know. You and I can go out yeah. there. We'll, we'll have a contest and, yeah. and we'll make a go at it. Uh, I like it. You do have an edge, though. I tell you, what, best best ribs in my life, best barbecue in my life comes out of Texas oh, for I sure. Know. Oh, it's changed my life. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, definitely. Yeah. 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 Well, Carlos, thanks for calling in, man. Keep I appreciate crushing it, Carlos. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I appreciate it, guys. Thank y'all for everything. Thank you, man. Yeah. It always cracks me up when um, the stuff that someone takes away from the show has nothing to do with oh, fitness. Yeah. <laughs> I, love yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. None of, none of us comment. And by the way, I'm making life a, nuggets. I am making a Journeyman shirt, so it's coming. Like oh. that is that is it's gone way too viral to not make a shirt. Damn off it! This year yeah. I uh, um, nobody commented on his goatee either. I was waiting for somebody to say that. That was like Justin. That, that took some time, dude. I mean, uh, Justin's insecure with his tiny beard. He's not gonna say anything about a big yeah, beard. But yeah, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, he looks like a master. Like I want to call him Master Splinter. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. looked like a kung fu master. Yeah. And and then Adam, you you say outfit when you're talking about your workouts. You need to change the word. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Down my outfit. Like, what are you doing, bro? Yeah. What do you call it? What yeah. do you, your clothes, your gym dude. clothes. My outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you say that, yeah. Justin and I look at each other like, yeah, like you're on a runway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I picture. You know what? Hold on. A Wait a second. Wait Let a me second. Call you out right How now. How is it any outfit. different if you throw on your chucks and your and your Viore pants yeah. and your wife beater? Everything. How is that not an outfit? I mean, I, uh, technically listen. it is, yeah. but, but I don't say it's an outfit. It's, it's, it's like the difference between going to a salon and a barber. Thank you. You know what? Okay, I'm going to call you. And I open I want you to be I honest. to a salon. <laughs> hey, too. I want you to be honest right now. Be honest with me. You're very open. Do you dude. put your, your clothes on the bed like you're wearing them to see what they look like? Do you go like, I don't got to do that pants. anymore. That's stuff I did like in high school. You train yourself enough times. <laughs> yeah. I know I know what looks good together. I Walk into his room and yeah, you see, yeah, like, wait, yeah. what is it? Yeah. Oh, this is tomorrow morning. Yeah. This is tonight's workout. Yeah. Good stuff. All right, our next. Next caller is Heidi from Alaska. Heidi, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, I really appreciate all the knowledge you guys provide through the podcast um, as well as your program. So Thank happy you. to be here. Um, I'll start with my question and then get into a little bit of background and specifics. Um, it's kind of a high level question, but um, how does one transition from being an athlete into leading a healthy training-based lifestyle? Um, for a little bit of background, I'm from Alaska, grew up in athletics, uh, played basketball and flag football in high school, and then a couple of years of college basketball. Um, those are obviously fall and winter sports, so I've always associated those times of year with training and routine and always having something external to show up for and then having like an off season in the summer. Um, but now that I'm no longer playing competitively, um, it's been a few years, I'm not fresh out of college, uh, 
but it's kind of ingrained in me of wanting to train during those months and have that consistent routine, um, but without that like external driver. Um, so just doing it for myself, but the seasonal aspect of it has led to a little bit of like up and down progress versus just consistent year over year. So yeah, just wondering what your thoughts are on making that transition from being an athlete to just living a training lifestyle and on the flip side, like are there any benefits of training seasonally? The woman who loves the journey. No, you said it wrong. Oh, you said it wrong. Sorry. Walking. Yeah. yeah. Walking. I was just waiting for it. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, know, he's, this is a sports this question. Is it, though. All yeah. athletic questions he should have to answer last. Uh, no, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> I was going to say, I was I hoping Justin would start first. Oh, oh, see, I was, you know what? You. I stole, I had something to tell you right away. He's not going to have anything to call I'm going to let, I'm going to let no, Justin. I want them to, to, to riff <laughs> and then I'll give you the real answer. That's how I looked at it. Yeah, we get there, but it's a tough one. It's definitely a tough one, and I struggle even still to this day because I want a competitive element to what I'm doing, and it's just like it's a shift in mindset. It's a big shift in mindset, and why I'm joking about the journey thing is because that's something I really had to find uh, a different way to look at training in general in terms of like I'm just doing this to benefit my body. I'm doing this to um, you know, for the long haul. And so everything has to change in terms of like now how I approach intensity, how I approach, um, different goals that I set for myself. So I've had to like, you know, parse that out, like which, what's going to drive me in the gym now. And so it, it took probably a good two years of transition from being an athlete. And I had off seasons and I'm focused like purely on performance and like how I could, you know, be the strongest guy on the team or like, you know, how that would translate into like how I'm moving and everything on the field. So it was a, it was like a completely different shift. And I think it's good to introduce yourself to a completely different training style for a while. Uh, and that's something that I kind of went into more of that of like hypertrophy. Then I went into more body weight training and things that challenged me completely different, uh, in, in mobility. But, uh, yeah, th this is something that, um, you're just going to kind of have to look at sort of the options and see what, what draws you in, what might be scary a little bit because it's completely outside of what you would normally do. Uh, but I'm now kind of finding myself back into a healthier way to find competition and still incorporate that. So I'd, I definitely don't say that you need to eliminate that. And and because if you enjoy sports, obviously, you know, that's a great activity to be involved in. It's just now we have to kind of manage uh, sort of the intensity and your body upkeep in terms of your joint health and everything else. Listen, Heidi, I, of all of us that are here, I'm probably the best at this. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to put that Do out there. I, was, I will. So here's the thing. Actually, being an ex-athlete is definitely to your advantage. I just think that people use it incorrectly and to justin's point or to build on justin's point is and what i learned to do was to take that competitive because there's a lot of value in the, the competitive mindset the consistency right. the discipline all those things are going to play into your favor if you know how to, to steer them in the right direction where people go wrong is they apply that mindset to always intensity to like my training session i have to kill myself i have to go beyond every every workout it has to be better than the last one and they get competitive in the wrong thing so get competitive with learning a new craft like justin said if you've never swung a mace bell before you know take your athletic mindset and discipline into getting good at that if you've never done a turkish get up really really well take your competitive mindset and get good at that movement if you've never like been really disciplined and consistent with doing mobility flows every single day for 20 minutes, get disciplined about that and be very consistent with that. Those things are all going to serve your overall journey of being what you call a NARP, what a, no, a non-athletic regular person, right? Just <laughs> NARP. Is that a, is that a real yeah. love that you bring that? Yeah, is that, that a real? No. Yeah, it's a real term. Yeah, that's a real term. It's, we, we, probably, it's normies. Um, I didn't never. I never yeah, heard. I never that in college football. We call I've that, yeah. never heard that before. Yeah. Once the once the NARPs come in, you know, like all the rest of the students are there. I, I didn't know that was. Yeah. I had to throw it in there because I saw she wrote that. And I'm like, what is a NARP, dude? <laughs> yeah, that's so great. Yeah. So yeah. So on your on your journey to become a NARP, uh, I just think that um, it's 
what athletes use it incorrectly, but there's lots of value of you being having an ex being an ex athlete and just learning how to shift in the right directions. The 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 number one mistake is they all just go the intensity route. Just think, oh, because I tr I practiced hard and that got me so far in sports. I'm going to apply that in the weight room, and that's just the wrong way to go about it. And you can still it, like go after things with that same competitive discipline, consistent mindset. It's just lay off the crazy. I have to break myself off in the gym all the time. That's where people, where the athletes go wrong. But I love that you said like being competitive about like mobility and being competitive about like restorative type stuff as well, because yeah, the tendency is to then sign up for like OCR race or something, right. like some kind of marathon or something like crazy to like punish your body, you know, like, so I guess it's just, you know, using that same competitive spirit, but doing it in ways that are going to, you know, benefit the the body in, in, in a holistic uh, aspect. So yeah, I, let's go a little deeper, though, because when you're, because I've trained athletes, I've trained quite a few, and, and the challenge is a lot of what they're saying, but the other challenge, which I think is actually the bigger challenge, is when you're in season versus off season as an athlete, when you're training, there's a goal in mind. There's a very specific goal. I have this game or this season I need to beat this other team or I need to run faster than my competitors or whatever. Then when you're off season, there is no competition. Okay. There is no specific competition. And so what it fosters is this mindset of on off, which I'm assuming is what you're being challenged with. Um, and if it's on, it's on. And there's a specific target. You, you actually visualize your competitor. You visualize the sport that you're going to compete in. And when you're off, you're like, oh, it's off season. I don't have anything to train for. And the challenge with that is, okay, well, when I'm not playing a sport, how do I stay consistent with this? It is a complete mind. You have to completely shift your mindset. If you ever watch kids play sports outside, not competing, but just playing, what you'll notice is they're just playing for the sake of playing. They enjoy it for the sake of enjoying it. This is what you have to figure out for yourself. There's a lot of different ways to do this. One way is to make you take your competitive nature and to compete in different aspects of training, like they're saying, where you can train with, you know, you can compete with mobility, you can compete with speed or power or recovery or, but the challenge with that, the problem with that is you're still going to be stuck in that competitive mindset. You're still going to find yourself sometimes being on and off and always seeking and searching for the next thing to compete for. So really what you really want to, what you really, the ultimately what you want to focus on is how do I do this for the sake of doing it? Okay. How do I do this and enjoy it for the sake of itself. So this is a mindset shift and it really doesn't matter what you do. I don't care what you do. It could be lifting weights. It could be running. It could be rowing. It could be the sport that you enjoyed competing in, but that's what you're going to have to figure out. And that means you're going to have to be very present in what you're doing and not think about the next goal. In fact, with people like you, first off, uh, ex-athletes were some of the hardest people to train after they stopped competing because they didn't understand that. It was either I have an on switch and it's full speed or it's off. They didn't understand the in the middle or how do I maintain this for the rest of my life. It was a really hard thing to do. But the ones that were successful with it were the people that did it because they just enjoyed it. And in fact, I would tell people like you, I don't want you to make any goals. I think that's the opposite of what you should do. You're, you're, you know why I'm going to tell you that, Heidi? Because you're going to make them anyway. Without even <laughs> trying, you're going to naturally have these goals. You're going to naturally remember what you did last workout. You're going to naturally remember what your performance looks like. It's like telling somebody with an eating disorder, I don't want you to weigh yourself on the scale, even if our goal is to get you you know, leaner. I don't want you to weigh yourself because that's a trigger. You know what's a trigger for hardcore athletes? Competition. Goals. Don't make any. Yeah, you're going to make them naturally, but don't make any. Instead, enjoy what you're doing. And what does that mean? I don't care. I don't care. Whatever you're doing, find a way to enjoy what you're doing. You know what's going to happen? You're going to do it consistently. You're not going to stop. There's not going to be an off season. So ultimately, that's the direction that I would aim for. Journey, man. Okay. Yeah. No. That that's all great. I mean, I, I definitely do find myself um, needing some sort of competition or external driver. But um, I think focusing on like the mobility aspect of it, that's something I've never really done. So shifting like my mindset to that and just focusing on getting better or the skill of lifting. It's, I just need to, it's, yeah. It's inside. Yeah. It's not outside. That external driver is not going to be there. And if you're constantly trying to create or find an external driver, it's going to be really hard to get out of this uh, particular space that you're in. And it's not an easy thing because you've trained yourself. You probably were really successful 
with external drivers. A lot of athletes are. Yeah. So you're going to have to find that internal, that intrinsic uh, thing that makes you enjoy what you're doing. So I could ask you right now, what's your favorite form of exercise? If you were just to do a form of exercise and forget results, forget goals, you just love doing it, could you name what that would what, what that is? Oh, it used to be like high intensity stuff, um, but it has shifted to more um, resistance training over the past year. Okay. So I would say go to the gym and just practice your lifts, get really good at your lifts, feel your body while you're doing it. Enjoy the, the time that you're spending in the gym. Um, enjoy that, that present space and develop that new skill. It's a new skill for you. It's not something that you you've developed in the past. But if you develop it, you'll find yourself, you know, it's not going to matter what you do. You're going to go in and just enjoy doing it. And then that competitive nature, it's always going to be there. So yeah. I, I would I would just leave that alone because it's always going to be there. It's part of who you are now. Just lean in. Lean into what makes you nervous and excited. I mean, you'll you'll find what you what you love if as long as you're like still kind of focused on things that, you know, and, and that's the thing about athletes too. There's always like going to be a challenge. There's always going to be that mindset that's going to be in the back of your head. It's like not something you're going to erase. But yeah, if you just kind of figure out like I really enjoy this, like lean into that harder, you know, and do something that makes you a little uncomfortable, and you'll get better at it, and then you'll get more love towards things that you know you're you're finding enjoyment out of getting better at yeah, too. What, what was your, what was your uh, sport of choice? Uh, basketball. Ah, good deal. Good deal. Well, yeah. I yeah. mean, <laughs> do you enjoy playing basketball even if you're not competing? I don't mean in the game, obviously within the game itself, you're trying to beat other people, but do you enjoy just playing? Oh yeah. I mean, I'll just go shoot hoots at the gym by myself. That's <laughs> fun for me. Oh, so there you so, go. That's, that's kind of what yeah. I'm talking about. Mm hmm. All right. You know, Heidi, I'm going to send you a program that I think I'm trying to think of a program that might help symmetry. Uh, someone like you. I would. Yeah. Symmetry. I was going to say symmetry. Yeah. Why don't I'm we actually, I'm, I'm on like week three. I'm starting week three of symmetry right now. Yeah. <laughs> at a girl. Excellent. Do you have maps prime pro? I do not know. Okay. We'll send that to you. Cause that's the mobility aspect. <laughs> okay. Perfect. You got that it. Heidi. Be great. For, very much. Thanks. For, appreciate it. You got it. Thank Thank, you. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, you, you ever look at, um, you, you see like ex-pro athletes and a very high percentage of them are really obese. Yeah. Boxers, fighters, Because it's players, all, like you said, it's that switch. It's all or nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's so the challenge. I, you know, I, I didn't want to argue with you while we were still on with her because we were going to drag that out forever. But I don't know if I fully subscribe to what you said. I do agree with a lot of what you said, but- it's really hard to tell somebody who is in, um, I mean, I think Justin would be lying if he says that he still doesn't have that competitive. That, that, well, I'd say, as honest thing, I'm yeah, still like that. that. That'll never die, Sal. And I didn't I, say to kill it. I'm I, saying yeah, don't but, feed it even more. So I, I don't know. I, again, I don't know if I agree with that. So I, what made the progress for me in my, my mobility was my competitive mindset. Like I became obsessed like an athlete becomes a set obsessed about a sport about becoming mobile because I sucked at it. I was I, so bad. I couldn't get past 90 degrees. I agree. That, I don't think what you're, I, I'm not, I agree with what you're saying. I think if you have a specific goal, it's very useful. The, the, the point that I'm trying to make is not about a specific goal. The point I'm trying to make is how do I do this consistently forever without on and off without doing long periods of being No, I get your I knew, I get what your point. And but I what, get, you're, I, what you're saying is true. I mean, anytime you have a specific goal, that's going to kick in. And you had that. You did right. that with the mobility. Right. It turned on. Right. So I, I think there's value in that. But when you're talking to someone who's like, how do I stay consistent? Because that's what her question was like. How do this on-season, mm -hmm. off-season thing, it's like, okay, for that specifically – don't make it. Don't don't feed into that. That's going to happen anyway. Well, She's going to do that on her own. So well, that's that's kind of how I've stayed consistent my whole life. I what I've learned to do is to shift the focus on something different. Yeah. All I look at it as a pie, right? So like if I'm, I was so heavy in the performance chunk of the pie, and now I'm just looking at a different part of that where it's like, okay, I could really lean into the mobility. I could really lean into power, speed. Like you're kind of mentioning those different aspects and elements of overall health, wellness, yeah. and fitness. So it's just like, it's taking a, a, a broader picture of the whole thing and not just staying so uh, hyper-focused in that one realm, but you can be competitive in any one of those and keep it rotating indefinitely. You that can, and, and I, that's what I'm trying to say. I, I don't, I'm not taking away that 
uh, at all that element. I think that's an important I know, but element. it comes off that way when you tell her to completely, you would tell her to completely shift her mindset and then just, just do what you love. And it's like, that's because I'm talking to her. I know. Yeah. I, 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 that's why I didn't, I didn't want to argue with you yeah. while you're on with her because I think you made some good points that I think are important, but I don't fully subscribe to that. I just, I, I, I have remained a competitive athlete uh, since the since the day I picked up a ball and played sports, and I've just what I've learned to do is to see the things that the the addictive behaviors or the bad things that yeah. it can lead to, like you, you're you're alluding to, and the on and off. Because I absolutely went through that phase, and what I've learned now to do is to just shift that focus to Justin's point of looking at you know being healthy and fit as this big sphere and it's not this little tiny pie it's this massive giant pie and that okay I'm just going to be competitive and sometimes being competitive is being competitive with recovery yeah like totally. a, you know like I'm going to be so I'm about to get competitive with myself where I'm waiting for this cold plunge to get done and I you bet your ass I'm already formulating a competitive goal with myself of how I'm going to use it oh yeah like I, just I mean that's I think that's a I think that's a winning strategy if you were talking to you back when you were uh, struggling with the on off right maybe when you were in your 20s i don't know when you were struggling with the on off yeah that would be what the discussion might be a little different now who who you are now is very different um you've been doing this for a very long time you've you uh you figured it out you're you're obviously very consistent now but you went through that period of on off it's like look it's like talking to somebody about um, body composition who has body image issues. Mm -hmm. Usually what I'll do is I'll say, don't look in the mirror, don't analyze your body, don't weigh yourself. Does that mean there's no value in looking in the mirror and weighing yourself? Of course not. Well, it's just in that period of time, we got to figure out how to develop a different relationship. And then you can go back and it's going to be there. You know, The competitive part of you, and look, I get very competitive too, and I, I didn't compete in traditional sports, but I get also very competitive with things that I'm doing with my training. I change it all the time. But I, I'm I mean, about I, I think we both I think know? we both agree on the destination yeah. that we want to go to, and I think where we're, we're we don't completely agree is on how to get to that destination. So I don't necessarily, again, I don't necessarily fully disagree with what you're saying because we both agree on the the desired outcome that yeah. we're trying to get. I just have a different approach to it. I would just communicate that to somebody like her consistently, and just you're right at that age. You know, she may not have that completely. She hasn't come full circle like I have at 40 years yeah. old. But uh, I don't know if necessarily trying to stifle her competitiveness would be the oh, way that I would well, do it. Also, keep in mind, you guys already talked about that. I'm adding on top of what you yeah, guys yeah, said. So yeah. I, if had you not said what you said, I would yeah. have definitely thrown that in because I think that's all part of it. But I think it's a balanced, uh, has to be well, a balanced Well, to be fair and kind of add to your, your point, Sal, like in terms of like that transitional period. So for me, it was, there was a bit of an on off uh, where it, it was like, I was like, I don't know what to do. Like there's this, this transition of like trying to find yourself uh, because you identified so strongly with yeah. being an athlete. And so I think that, you know, you challenging her mindset to then shift into just being in the gym is a valuable um, part of the process, just yeah. showing up, you know? And so to, to then kind of take you back into then, okay, now I, I can focus on something and have that drive again and use it towards things that are going to benefit me long-term um, but there is that, that, that window I had to like really have that like crazy hardship yeah. because I was such a strong identified athlete. Oh, it's one of the hardest. It was some of the hardest clients I ever trained were, yeah. were ex athletes because of that. Yeah, mindset. I would agree with My, that. 100%. I mean, ath athletes are, it's really tough to get them out of the, the intensity mindset, that athlete of, mindset. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think we all did point on something and said it in, in different ways that, uh, you know, go in there and focus on an, an exercise or a movement. And be competitive with getting good at it. Totally. Mm -hmm. Like that, I mean, and, and part of getting good at it is, you know, you got to lighten the load and you work on technique yep. and you slow down the reps yep. and you analyze the form. Like, and can I be competitive with my mindset? Yeah. And I get this to the point where I just enjoy doing it for the sake of it. Right, right. Totally. Look, uh, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have tons of guides that can help you with many fitness and health goals. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam, and you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps, and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out. And less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.